All right. Well, <laughs> we are back at the stop and chat. Let me tell you something. Today we have a special, special, special guest, Mr. Jeff Rowley. Legend. Legend. <laughs> is that the part of the intro, Chris, where like it's all moody and then it leads in? I try to take him on a roller coaster ride. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Jeff, thank you so much for stopping by and uh, chatting with us. How are you? I'm good, man. Doing great. Yeah? I, just, I was skating today, so I'm a little bit cooked. It's starting to warm up in California, right? Like, it's starting oh. to, as soon as you get off the coastline, you're you're hitting, like, the higher 80s kind of deal. So, I'm good, man. Just skated today. Skated with uh, Pedro Barros and skated with uh, Clive Dixon. And- Ooh, oh, wow. So he's going big. Yeah. And uh, TJ Gaskell, do you know TJ? Yep, TJ's oh, awesome. Yeah. Skated today, kind of at the base of the mountain. I've been living up in the mountains. I've been look, living up in uh, in Big Bear Mountain, which is uh, kind of like a mountain lake, about I don't know, just just shy seven thousand foot. Mm-hmm. But I've been I've been living up there the last three months with my family. So came back down to Long Beach yesterday. Sick. And uh, but that's what I've been doing, man. Just kind of yeah. following yeah. orders like everybody. Yep. You know, Wearing masks. Doing told and, Yep, same here, but, uh, man. We've been. Uh, good. I mean, I'm. I have to say, like, I, I'm fortunate. I feel very fortunate at times like these that I'm, I'm able to like feed myself. Do you know what I mean? And protect. I have keep my family safe. Yep. Like these are the times that you you're thankful for that. Absolutely. You know? I'm good. Thank you for asking. How are you guys doing? We're doing great, man. I'm good. Kelly's great. Roger's great. I'm speaking for him, but I, I was just, I was, I'm with them. <laughs> doing know? great. I knew that they were here. Yeah. Hey, we're finally back in the house, dude. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. Do you remember when I was on the show? Do you, do you know when that was? Do you guys have any idea? Ooh. <sighs> Kelly, do you want to look on that real quick? Yeah. To see when the, I have no idea. I'm guessing, what, a year? Ago? About a year ago. About a yeah. year. Yeah, because it was, it was while we were filming that but last Vans video that came out like last, that came out last year. Yes. Right? October or something last I can't even remember towards the end of the summer that came out so it must have just been kind of just before yeah. then um April 8th April 8th April right? a little earlier wow. than yeah yeah I think we finished that video like August maybe mm. that sounds about right yeah that's crazy you, you were saying that you went you were you were skating today with uh you know Clive and Pedro and all Pedro, these yeah. rippers um you know, I skate with Raj, but uh, he's a ripper too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, what? Uh, let, let me ask you something, bro. Clive Dixon. Now he is becoming, and or has become, one of my favorites. He is such a beast on his board. Such a nice dude. Yeah. When he, I mean, he listen Staples Center. Yeah. He oh. knows blunt slid that led oh, with yeah. your statue in the background. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. I know, it's so gnarly. Like, he's an amazing dude, you know, so humble, down to earth, and just always wants to go, you know, turn it up a little bit. I a like little that. bit. <laughs> I, I can come in any form. It doesn't matter your style of skating. It's just the juice to want to do it. Totally. You know? yeah. Like, he's got that juice to always, like, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm stoked on that. And, no, I saw that. Like, I, that was gnarly, man. That should have been on the cover of Thrasher magazine. Jeff. Sorry, guys, but it should have been on the cover of Thrasher. It was brutally. <laughs> and, oh, I mean, you and know? you should know. I mean, you are an alumni of that ledge. I just like everyone knows that a nose blunt like that, that's a high to get into. And sure. it's not a mellow ledge. It's steep, too. So it's high and steep and long. It's one of them ones like if you fall on it, you won't run out of it. You'll probably fall out of it and roll upside down kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anybody who does anything on that, like, you know, is like, and quite a few dudes have done tricks on it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Over yeah. the years. Yeah. In, uh, you know, anything on that thing's just pretty heavy, but the nose blunt, that's, yeah. that takes, takes what, the cake. What did Michael Hollinger do on it? Did he like one of your nose grind it? He wanted your nose grind it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. And it, there was one around the other side, like a double kink one around the other side, yeah. I think. Didn't he know slide that one too or something? He probably did. Yeah, he did some gnarly stuff on that spot. Chad Fernandez did a bunch of gnarly stuff on that. Mm-hmm. I think he five owed it. And um, I think Clyde Crook grinded it, right? Yeah. Somebody oh, probably yeah, grinded yeah. it. Dustin Dolan should have kicked foot board slid it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> should have. What's you know, his name? I did, did boards with it too. I always wanted a frontside board slide that thing. Sebo Sebo Walker did nollie flip manual down the hubba. Oh, I remember that. That was yeah. gnarly. Dude. Yeah, yeah, that's gnarly. Like I said, anything down that thing, <laughs> rolling down it is like only an eight or nine stirs at the end. 
Yeah. Like you've got to be ready. To so you're on top of a roller coaster. Up. It used to look a lot more terrifying because it was the only building around right. in downtown. So you had all these skyscrapers that were, you know, a thousand yards away, but a lot of wasteland all around that you probably remember, Roger. Yeah. Ever went there? Yeah, very early on. And, um, so I remember that because you could see it from the freeway a little clearer. There was less distractions. I remember looking at it first and uh, that's kind of like what you where we saw it while we were going to skate some other spots in like downtown LA I think that's kind of like when we saw it but what was it flies, flies gnarly dude that's so heavy dude some skaters skating past right now oh <laughs> bring them in tell them come to say tell them oh, say hi they looked a little bit ropey they're not coming in don't say that <laughs> You know, what was it, man? Are you, when you were on the show, we were talking about the Staples Center ledge. We were talking about, you know, the trick that you did down it. And, and you were saying that there was a another something around the corner that you were really. Oh, yeah. No, it's not around the corner. I'm going to fully disclose it live. I was going right? to I was going to ask for the. For the disclo- yeah. Hey, Dude, I, like I actually looked at it recently okay. went there and looked at it and went. <sighs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I look. I'm not gonna do it. Oh, you're not. <laughs> I looked at it, but back in the day, I looked at it and went, "I'm gonna grind. I'm gonna angle grind that little screw down. I'm gonna come back and do this." Okay. And then I never did. I kind of forgot about it, to be honest with you. But then when I looked at it recently, I looked at it and went, "Somebody needs to do this. Please do it." Do you think Clyde will do it? Looking up the stairs at the hover, straight to the left of it, where those stairs end. There's a rail coming down. The rail goes down about ten of the stairs. And then it turns to ledge. So it kind of goes into the ledge on top of it and there's a big bolt on the top. Oh. But the way that, where that the rail lines up, lines up to grind straight to another grind. So you'd be over a head high grind halfway down. So it would be like grinding staples, but right when you get on, it's a rail. Yeah. And then you slap it onto a wall. <laughs> oh my. And you go about six foot and then you would drop off. But you could do the drop, it's not high. It's, so high that you couldn't roll away from the end like a 12 foot drop or something someone needs to go and do it it's front side for regular okay and uh someone go grind something crazy and send it to nine club and we'll watch it. <laughs> did you mention that to um, clive yeah, yeah we mentioned it. i talked to him about it i talked to dane berman because he's gnarly Ooh, he's gnarly as fuck yeah I, I think dane's looked at it and i looked at it back in the day and thought i want to grind it but then didn't get to it but I looked recently, the other side might be skatable too for different, and it might not be as scary, the other side, but the trick is grind, grind. Grind, grind. But, um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's lots of spots out there, man. There, there truly is. There's, you've just got to open your eyes. And, you have, you, have you been going out skating lately because of all this quarantine stuff? Or have you like- Not, not because of the quarantine. Like I said, I was up in Big Bear and I got sick like a few days before they like locked everybody down. Oh. I wasn't sure what it was. I was in hospital, it was pretty rough. Oh wow, oh, jeez. Yeah, rough and it was to do with, it wasn't COVID, but it was similar, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm glad I'm not there today, right? Yeah. No, it was, I got ill, um, you know, right when they did the kind of lockdown, which wasn't good because I felt pretty rough. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to get somewhere safe because my immune system wasn't hundred percent because yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I just went, like I said, I've been up in the mountains, but I've been skating. I've been skating a bunch, like the last, I don't know, maybe last four weeks oh, nice. out of the eight weeks. We've been kind of like laid down the first few weeks. I kind of just paid attention to what was going on because I needed to recover and didn't want to get ill. Sure. You yeah. know? But I have been skating recently. Yeah. You know, Skated today, like I said, filmed a couple of tricks today. What were the tricks? <laughs> uh, I want to nose grind, come out forward, but on this like bank with a ledge, but the ledge is like angled, okay. every bit of it's angled. Oh. So it's a really weird angled ledge on top of a ditch bank. Very uh-huh. difficult to skate, very difficult to get the right angles on. I got two tricks on that. I did like a one eight nose grind and came out forward and then a kickflip nose slide and came out forward. Love wow. That. So you had a good day. Ooh. Yeah, I had a good day. Dude, we had a banger of a day. Pedro got a sick line and a single trick separate and then Clive got a really good trick. But yeah, are, just, are they skating the spots with you? Oh, what's that? I, I said, are they skating the spots with you? Like, are they, when you guys roll up to a spot, you know, are, are you guys all sessioning together? It was like, okay, whoa, that, this is gnarly. We'll let Roly deal with this one. Or like, what, what's a no, session like? The trick at the exact same spot. Like I said, Pedro got like a line and a single trick. I got a couple of tricks and then okay. Clive got a single trick there. Oh, same, tr- same spot. Oh, no, he got two tricks. What the? Yeah, we got <laughs> two tricks today. Wow. 
James on later. <laughs> Dude, everybody's everybody's getting clipped. Are you guys filming for uh, another band's thing, or what's going on? Uh, I'm filming for a board video. Is what I want to do. Okay. You know, so I'm just starting to film. Uh, that last video, I got kind of hurt right at the end of it, mm-hmm. and I was good like all the way through. When I came on the Nine Club, I was in like real. I felt healthy. Mm-hmm. Felt like I was in good shape. You know, and um, you know, finished that video, and then I took that slam that was at the start of my part in that video, which was I stuck on a board slide and hit my chest really oh, bad. Yeah, this was, is the oh, ambulance ride, right? Fun sucked. Yeah. <laughs> hey, ow. Like talk about ow. Like take take a mallet to your pelvis oh. and your like hip bone. It, it sucked. This is know? the and, this is that's the hospital. Uh, the one you were you were going to jump out of yeah, the ambulance. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty rough. Like I'll be honest with you, it was like a pretty rough slam. It was the first time I had where. I felt really inside, like I, I needed to slow down, you oh, know, yeah, like crazy, not doing like heavy, like the tricks. I mean, just, I needed to, it was a rough slam. Jeez, yeah, yeah, right? You need horrible. to take a second. I, 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 I drove myself like freaking straight from the slam. Like the, I think I was with, I did Greg Hunt, Burnett, Ryan Lavelle. Um, and that was it. Okay. I think I shouted, Hey Mike, can we do Savannah Slammer three? He's like, Yeah, we could do Savannah Slammer three. I'm like, We're doing Savannah Slammer three. I got, I went nuts in my head, and I could, I could only think of um, Tim Jackson. Do you know who Tim Jackson yeah. is? Yep. You guys are Santa Monica Venice. I see him around here sometimes. Wrote, Tim yeah. Jackson wrote. He was such a good skater, like such an unusual skater. Watch Speed Freaks. Mm-hmm. He, he did all that stuff up the walls, and he yeah. grabbed it. So I, sc- I was screaming his name, kind of like riding full speed <laughs> in my head, going, Tim Jackson, Tim Jackson, we're going to do Savannah Slam with three. And that was like the second go I stood up on that ledge. That's how juiced up I was. I stood up and just went, I'm just going to do it like right away. Fuck this second go, third go, fourth go. I'm going to do it fucking first. Fuck this thing. Yeah. So I just stood up on it and like I'm just going to stand up and take the whole way. And it fucking stuck. It had those little tiny concrete you know, on the edge of concrete, and sometimes it's rough and bits stick up. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, just, it felt like I, I, I hit a little bit of that where I couldn't do anything about it, and it, and it threw me. Yeah, rub break. But I hit, like, here, and I hit, like, down here, and then a little bit lower, just below my hip. So it, it meant I couldn't skate very the way that I wanted for, like, three months because I was yeah. just kind of bruised up inside, you know? Right, right. So I've just been skating. To be honest with you, like, that hurt me a little bit, and then I, I decided to take a little bit of a breather, you know, mm-hmm. after that slam to make sure I was in good shape because my insides felt like they were moved. All my internal organs were like I'd skate and I'd feel sick. Oh, you know? wow. Jeez. You know, and I had scans and all that stuff all over my chest. And I just had, I had br- really bad bruising all the way through all the bits and didn't feel that great. Um, Damn. But I feel, I feel good now. Top you know? notch, I huh? I just need to take a little bit of a, a few months just to let my body recover so that it didn't go into shock and right kind of me. So you know? yeah you just you, you got kind of a little a wake up call but then you just you, yeah, know, it you needed to take a break it was yeah at like 42 <laughs> <laughs> you hit the reset button it was a 43 year old wake up call <laughs> <laughs> finally at least it didn't take it wasn't lights out so no but it was one of those you, you, you take those kinds of slams and you you think dude am I gonna you know am I Am I hurt? am I badly hurt right now? When you hit your insides, have you ever done that, Kelly? Where you're slamming like, have you ever had it where you're like vomiting or you, you know? I've had it where I just felt really like nauseous almost. Yeah, where you just mm. yeah. slam so yeah. hard and you just yeah. It felt like that every time I'd go to like jump around. You know, like my insides didn't want to skate for a little bit. <laughs> well, it's uh, funny I, when I hear from some people who jump down a lot of things that you know they 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 slam and they they jumble their insides so much that they they end up pissing blood. I and mean, then you got to watch out, right? Like the body's crazy if it decides to shut down on you. Yeah. You know, and I, we had a. I mean, when I saw you guys, I think like I was like I said, I was in really good state, skate, uh, really good shape. I was all like juiced to skate. I was filming a bunch and mm-hmm. and. Uh, I mean, we all know, like, last year was so heavy. Like, we lost so many of our friends. We yeah, lost man. so many of our friends lately. And, you know, I, I, I'm personally been going through that quite a lot, you know? Oh, and, mm-hmm. you know, guys that skate and guys outside of that, you yeah. know? And, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting year. You know, I had, I had a lot of fun skating. It was a good year for me, you know, personally and my family. All my family was healthy. Amazing. Um, but it was a very testing year, I think, for skateboarding and, like, fans of skateboarding and 
myself included. It puts everything in perspective, you know, skating, life. I mean, every every little aspect. Yeah. Well, you guys saw that. I don't know if you saw the Take It Back video, but it was dedicated mm-hmm. to Jake. But the whole original plan for that was let's take Jake to England where I'm from and we'll skate all these old skate parks that like no one really hits that much. Yeah. And he skated some of them before. So he was all psyched on the trip. So like he was the glue for the video. Like, oh, honestly, wow. like I just wow. used the energy for that video. And the first trip, you know, um, was Ronnie, Pedro and myself to London. Right. So we skated London for a couple of weeks and most of the footage in the video was like a lot of it from that trip. And then those guys left and went back to the U.S. Actually, Jake got kicked. Well, they tried to kick him out of the hotel and then he burnt down meanwhile, or maybe he did, maybe he didn't. (laughs) Um, And uh, so that was the start of it. And then, you know, Jake passes. And Mm. when you're making a video, the energy is just like positive all the way through with with people that love skating with Jake or being around him and that had a very similar process to like the approach to skating sure and um that was difficult like we're finishing the video right there was loads of footage of him Mm. of all the tricks in london he was at pretty much most of the spots with all the tricks yeah right so and i had i had that with shane cross like you've edited loads of videos roger right yep like deadlines for videos and the guys in video and his past you know yeah that's the second time i've dealt with like looking at the footage of Putting video footage of a person in the video that's past that like it needs to be positive, mm-hmm. it needs to be the way it needed to be, it yeah, needs no, to be I... the same way it was supposed to be, and it needs to do them be justice, right? Like, yeah. It needs to be beautiful, right? Sure. At that point, yeah, that, that was crazy. That was a little bit weird because I was skating with Ben in London after those guys went, Ben Raymond's, oh, yeah. yeah, and this is me like 20 years of me riding for vans, getting all juiced up to film a video for you know, with my friends in it or guys that I was all psyched on just to have a, like, energy-filled video. And uh, so last year was kind of gnarly. Like, like I said, the skating yeah. side of it, like, just, I didn't even give a shit. Like, I was ready to just jump off a building, Damn. you know? But, uh, but that was gnarly. So trying to make positive of that, you know? Um, like I said, I, would, I went up to Liverpool after I was in London, and then I came back down to London and skated with Ben a couple of times. And like I was a big fan of his skateboarding, such a professional, cool. such an incredible skateboarder, so well rounded. Yeah, man. And um, I wanted to mention him because it bears it bears you know mentioning like he's an amazing he was an amazing skateboarder and he was an amazing professional skateboarder from England. Mm-hmm. You know that I was proud that was from the country. Yeah, uh, he was um, had good manners. You know, and I don't know, like um, that pissed me off. <laughs> you know, sure. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. You know, and at the same time, like, you still just think that, like, skateboarding still carries on, right? She goes. She goes. Yeah. It's you not know? stopping. So, yep. Yeah, she goes. And I'm just, this year, I'm trying to really be cognizant of, you know, just your life in general and the role that you play in your life with your loved ones and mm. your, your relationship with your skateboard. Yeah. yeah and man. the people around you you know sometimes we could take yeah. the people around us for granted i'm straight up i'm so thankful that you guys fucking exist <laughs> thank you, <laughs> you know? thank you wow. yeah That's, you as well you yeah. as well yeah. I, feel like, I feel like that way about all of the magazines and, and media that is trying to promote positive mm-hmm. skating yeah you know all of them you know the thrashers and transwells and barracks they're they're all rad dudes just wanting to skate and want to live the dream just like us and, yeah it makes it very clear on, you know, for me that like, um, you know, just be thankful for what you got. Totally. Yeah. You know? It's funny, Jeff, because like a lot, I mean, we do get comments from time to time or DM or whatever from people like, why do you only talk about this video? Like, why don't you talk shit about this? Blah, 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 blah. Like, talking business. Yeah. And it's like, we're here to celebrate skateboarding. Like, why would we start talking shit yeah. about, like, it just doesn't make sense, yeah. you know? It's, it's like, that, it's, it's not even us either, you know? Yeah. It just kind of, I'm like, why are you, what, what's the point? I'd, I'd, be, I'd have be hard pressed to find somebody that picked up skating because of the, how sick the negativity was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> Seriously. Oh, yeah. Fuck and Dude, they hate right? everything. I <laughs> love that. It's so wrong. Let's do this. <laughs> there might be a few out there. I felt like it was a comic book. You open a comic book and everyone went, poof. Right. <laughs> That's what it felt like to me. I you didn't ever, know what to do with what I was seeing on the walls of the skate shop. Like, 
how, why would a person spend all that time drawing that graphic for it to be on a skateboard? Like, yeah, just sure. yeah. hadn't seen that level of artwork anywhere. Have you, you know? do you look at um, like slap message boards and stuff like that? No, I mean, back in the day, you'd hear all of that positive and negative stuff that I had one back on the day that I tried to 360 flip between some trains and it died right at the deadline. I think oh, was, what? You, know, you remember that? Wow. I remember reading that going, no, but I want a 360 flip between two trains while I'm moving. <laughs> I don't want to die doing it. And you know what? I know where to do it. The good places to do it is some of those kind of like desert stops. Jeff, we'll Photoshop two trains in there for you, bro. I don't want you to, you know, I don't want you to it's get not worth hurt, it. man. Big locomotives, too. We'll find the best Google images and Photoshop some <laughs> trains in there. Hey, it's never worth it, right? Like all of that. It's never worth it. There, yeah. I was going to ask you, when you were talking about uh, going and skating London with the guys and everything, was that the was that the uh, spot? I'm not I'm not familiar with it, but that... Um, South Bank? Or? Yeah, that, no, that... Um, um, Fucking uh, Ronnie did the uh, over. It was like kind of a a, a shell, and he did an over. Oh, the clamshell uh, thing. Like yeah, he was grinding them over it or something. Yeah, like was that. that that was that out there? Uh most of the footage. If you look at all the crusty parts in that video, yeah. or most of them, the crustier ones are in England on that first trip. First trip, but some of them are. There's a front blunt that Pedro does in Romford Skate Park. Romford is a heritage skate park. I think it's the only one in the world. Maybe oh. that's actually a heritage location. You can't chunk up the concrete, right? Can't be touched, basically. Gotcha. It's been around since 1978 or something like that. Oh. He did a front blunt at that on the on the uh, quarter pipe. That's the end of the park. That people that go there and see that, you no one even would go. You can't go up there. No, no. you don't go there. He front blunted the top of it, and then two weeks later, when they went. There was these freak fires in England and it burned down the whole quarter pipe to the ground. Mm. And in that video, there's a quick clip. Watch it. It's so sick. He basically does a front blunt on like an 11 foot quarter pipe that's on top of like a six foot ditch. Okay. So he rides the whole skate park to get the speed, goes up the bank flat and then goes up an 11 foot quarter pipe with a full drop on the backside. So probably 15 plus feet on the backside, front blunt, boom, right back in. And then that whole quarter pipe burns down two weeks later. Wow. Like, oh, hey. like uh, wildfire in the UK, which never really happens like that. But uh, it's concrete, though. I mean, I guess concrete could still get destroyed by no, fire. But it's, but. It's the, um... Well, the, the quarter pipe was wood, so the skate park was concrete. Uh, and they built this wooden kind of no platform quarter pipe that was a vert ramp. But yeah, if it, nobody's hitting it, it, then <laughs> think... Ridiculous. It's Pedro. Yeah, no, no, I am. Trust me. Anything. He's gnarly, yeah, he, dude. He's in town right now. You should get him on. That'd be amazing. We talked about getting him on the show, and then all this craziness happened with the COVID mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. But yeah. we would love to have him on the show if that was possible. Yeah, we're, it's, it's a yeah, weird you situation. Have, you have to be aware, like, you know, everybody gets to make that decision, right? And you don't, we're all got, you know, I've got two kids and a partner, right? And right. Like, I have to think about them, you know? So I, I, I was locked down for, for a long time, you know, mm -hmm. for before I seen anybody, I don't even know, four, five, six weeks. Sure. And then I just went, the first time I went out, I went out with guys that I, that I got ill with, that I was already with, so that, and they hadn't been with anybody. So two dudes that I was with that weren't around other people, right. you know, anyone else that we hadn't already been around. So I went riding with them, you know, um, for a little bit. But other than that, I waited, waited a while and then just kind of started going out skating. Yeah, yeah. Just figuring that, like, Man, the clock's still ticking. Not getting any young. I've got to get them hammers in there. And just get them out, or get a mallet out, or something. <laughs> and, uh, I but think... no, I'm, I'm stoked. Like I said, I had a great year last year skating. I really enjoyed my skating, mm -hmm. and uh, I just took a nasty, un shitty chest slam for a little while. But I'm enjoying my skating. I want to skate. You should do some of these at skate parks. Let's go skate and do some live ones. That would be amazing. Up in the middle of the session and <laughs> interview and then go back into the session, play a game of skate. And, you know, Kelly, you can't play the game of skate though. You're out. Yeah, I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever skate? Do you ever skate curbs at all? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of skate everything, you know. My ankle's been a bit funny, like my left ankle. So I haven't been as like technical on the flat ground. My kickflips have been good one day and a bit funny the other because my ankle's a little bit funny right now mm. but um no i skated every day. did a little front blunt on a little curb the other day 
Yeah, it was fun. You should come down and skate these curves in Santa Monica with these guys, man. It's pretty damn fun. So fun. Yeah. It's right. Yeah, it's it like, like the, the old the old school. Uh, Tim the, Henry's video. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Tim Henry's video live. Yeah. Just <laughs> have no slide 270 transfer. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Never a good time there. Now it's not. It's not quite that right. It's backside two seventy tail, just backside two seventy flip transfer. <laughs> yeah. and I just watched that video the other day. So good. Yeah. Tim Gavin. You know what's sick about that? Just smooth. You know, yeah. and like a loose. Like if you look at a lot of the tricks, their feet are dragging off the tricks a little bit here and there, and like it's about the rhythm of the tricks a lot in that video that I really like. Yeah. You know, and Tim, I mean, Tim Gavin was so smooth, wasn't oh he? Oh my God. It was so easy on the eyes to watch. Oh, it was a so short. Yeah, stuff. it was a short <laughs> and he, he just flowed so well, yeah. man. Brown chuckers, whatever Ooh. he wore. Yeah. Yeah. He no, he's, he's a, he's, funny. he's hilarious. He sells houses what now. That is? Ooh, that would be he good. That was pretty punk. Wow. Henry Sims. Right, he, he did skate to Slayer. Was it Slayer in that video? Was it Slayer or Metallica? I can't remember. What was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sabbath. Yeah. Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Henry Sanchez skating to Slayer, but it works so well. Sabbath, wild. right? Even better. Crazy, man. Should I stop moving my camera? I'm sweating in here because I turned the AC off so it isn't super loud. What, what's up with Freedom? You said you, are you, you, you that's what you're filming for right now is a Freedom? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, what am I on? I just, we just did season two. So we did okay. these ad boards right here. Right. Which were like hand, we did a first run, which were hand spray painted and hand screened by it, mm-hmm. which is pretty sick. He'd never like, he'd never pulled a, a transfer. He'd never pulled a screen in his... Sorry, he never pulled a screen in his life. Really? Really? Sick. Yeah. Huh. But Ed sprayed these and then screened them. And then this one was kind of a combination of just screened and then Ed did some of the, pulled some of the films. Okay. So we, we did this one first, which is like completely handmade by Ed, right? And then we did this one and then we did a another short run, I think like last week of these ones, wow. uh, which is another just hand screen. Um, you know, honestly, like I'm just having fun with it. Like season two, we did about, I don't know, four or five, six graphics. And we're kind of at the end of that season and sold through pretty much everything huh. on uh, in that. So we're about to kind of like roll out the third season of gear. Nice. You know? And uh, and uh, so kind of just working on the graphics and building the company. It takes a while. It you does. To open, yeah. Just to open up the accounts globally. Yeah. It takes a while. Yeah. Not, and I mean not like three months. It takes a while to really get it, get that those lines of communication and those uh, supply chains kind of open. It takes a little while. So I'm slowly just opening up, you know, distributors. I opened up uh, uh, Germany. Oh, if Jeff Rowley called up my shop, I'd order those things in a heartbeat, man. Well, I have a, par- I have a partner that kind of, you know, handles all the sales just and ju- everything. Still, I'll do just jump on the phone. But I've been enjoying it. It's been good. The, you know, the, I've been doing the, the, graphics. Yeah. You know, you know, and we've had a good response. Like the, you know, people have been psyched on the graphics and I don't know, um, just genuinely, I think the response has been that we're not trying to do anything. We're just trying to be a skateboard company and just make skateboards and enjoy it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if you do rad stuff like that, like hand screen boards, are you, is that a limited, do you only do a certain number? Well, this, of this one was, I don't remember how many we did them, a, a very short run. This was a little bit more and then less of this one too. This one was okay. literally, we'd made all Ed's boards. And then we realized of, from the, of the same shape, we had a bunch of blanks still in here. Mm. And these, I'm not even, these sold in like an hour or two. Oh, like, I've got to imagine. Sold out, Jeff, you know? are you still uh, hand screening all the boards? No, no. Like we, we screen what we can. Yeah. Mm. You know, we but you've been doing heat transfers now too, or? Yeah, we do whatever will make the best graphic kind of thing. And then sometimes just hand screening some of the boards has been uh, efficient. You know what I mean? Like I enjoy the process, so if it's not like too complicated from the screen print side, three or four colors, yeah, graphics and stuff, then uh, yeah, we'll try to screen print. You know, to me, it adds just a layer of kind of handmade to the to the product. Yeah, that uh, you know, I feel like those are the boards you want to hold on to too, though. Like for collectors, stuff like that, I think it's pretty cool. Like for these Ed boards, you know, for Ed to spray the boards before we screened over the top of them, yeah, and stuff like that, like. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep doing stuff like that every time because that's the fun of it. 
that's the side of it that got me into it. That's the stuff that I enjoy to do. And it's kind of lost nowadays too. And the smell of boards is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot out there right now. I do think it's an amazing time in skateboarding. No, I do think it's a very, very fast, progressive time in skating. And we'll look back at this period as this just melting pot of just craziness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I just watched that, uh, the Jack O'Grady is raw footage from one of those arm trips. Yeah, oh, okay. gnarly. It's gnarly. Like, yeah, there's, there's so many good, so much good skateboarding going on. It's um, if you're a fan of it, you know there's a lot to, a lot of different board shapes, a lot of different mm -hmm. graphic styles right now, like to choose from. Yeah. It must be fun to be a kid right now. Right. You know, well, say. yeah. Mike V does his uh, does a lot of stuff yeah. out of his garage, yeah, which does. is amazing. I've stuff. seen Mike for a while, but I do see what he does. He does some sick graphics. Yeah. And cool stuff. I've always been a fan of Mike Villani skating. He's just, he's different. There's no, there's just nobody quite like him. Right. True. And, and he's still doing it. Like I mean, I did this board with Ed um, because I skated with him like crazy forever, you know? And I, and he's that kind of skater that like, there's only one Ed Templeton, yeah. you know? Yep. And he got me really motivated to skate. And, uh, you know, I had a guest board on Toy Machine a couple of like a year or so ago. Uh -huh. Right. And then, so that's kind of like why he has this guest board because he asked me a while back for a toy machine when I wasn't riding for anybody um, in between kind of like starting this company. So I thought mm -hmm. it would be funny to kind of like call him up and say, Hey, what about like, how about you have a board? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then it all comes full circle because this was on a painting that Ed gave me in 1995. Oh my God. Have you ever seen those one wheeled like hoverboard kind of things? Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. Someone just ripped past going like, <laughs> yeah. her, Jeff, her hands in her pockets. Call him in. Let's go say hello to him. She's, I couldn't keep oh, up okay. with her. She's okay. gone. <laughs> Dude, I, I saw someone on one of those and he, I was skating this manual pad and he jumped onto the manual. Pad. They have hooks from now. Yeah, and he could like got up and went across, and went down, and I was like, oh my god! And then he looked at me, he's like, Nine Club, and I was like, oh my god, this yeah. guy watches the Nine Club. Did he <laughs> GoPro you? Did he GoPro as he's going past? Just yeah. live. Yeah. Don't I wish I would have. They have like him. sky hooks on on those things now. Jeez, That's not that happens a lot. Like when it, when we were filming in China, that happened a lot. Like be trying to film a trick, and then all of a sudden, I mean, like you're pushing full speed. This happened to me. You're pushing full speed. A drone comes down like right next to you, like what the? <laughs> like that actually does happen in this day and age. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. that happened to me, Chris. And I was trying to do a trick in like a crowded area, and it'd fly off again. And then I'd, I'd go to ride up, get my run up, and it just like and dude, then, just, and, a dude. I didn't know who it was at first. That's the thing proud. is, people that they, they they could be like you know uh, a block away and just fuck yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't back that. I'm a I'm a destroyer of drones. I could imagine. <laughs> I, I I was gonna ask if you just grabbed it from the sky and just crushed it. And Throw your board out. Yeah. I actually asked the guy really nice. Hey, please, can you stop filming me? Right. It's distracting. And like, I was actually worried because he doesn't know the way skaters move. Mm -hmm. I was worried like one of the propellers might hit me. Yeah. Yeah, he was an eye. Totally. Yeah. Totally, dude. People have died from those things. Doesn't know how to. What trick are you trying? Uh, like a like a kind of a. If I remember, like a nose blunt up these stairs. It was like a weird up stair ledge. Oh. Kind of like a bank that went upstairs, and I was trying to go up the bank, slap it, and slide up it. Sick. It was a weird spot. But it was too many people. It was in a crowded oh. Chinese scenario. Sure, sure. <laughs> busy, busy area. You could have had him airdrop you the footage. <laughs> Probably already online. Yeah. <laughs> probably live. It's probably on the news channel over there live. Yeah. Skateboarders ripping up the city again. Right, right. It was high. <laughs> What's up with Big Bear? You said you were living up there. How how is life yeah. up there though? Because very Big Bear can be very. What what's a little city up there? Is it Crestline or what? What's there's, the yeah? There's a ton of towns. Up yeah, there. you know, Lake Arrowhead, Forest Falls, Lake Angelo. Arrowhead. Is it? it are you? Mark Johnson lived up in Running Springs. I think it was. I think Running it was Springs. Crestline. That's kind of a little bit more west, like where I was is kind of like the east side of Big Bear. Oh, gotcha. Baldwin Lake. And the reason for that is it's the eastern, an eastern part of that mountain range. And if I want to get out of town real quick, I've actually been staying 300 yards away from the Forest Service. Oh, <laughs> I'm wow. not paranoid. really? No, I'm not paranoid. No, but it doesn't um, sound like it. No, I have a place up there. I've had a place up there for forever since... 
2003, 2004, 2005, somewhere there. I've had a house up in Big Bear because I spend a lot of time kind of up in that mountain and I guide in that mountain too. For the oh, oh yeah, 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 that's yeah, right. I guide there too. So I've had a place up there for a long time. Um, so, um, but it's it was kind of messed up a little bit, right? As this pandemic happened, the shower broke. Mm. So I was staying in another place down the road, fixing it up. Now I've fixed it up and I'm going to go back again in about a week. It's such a nice getaway. Like we'd go up to MJ's house yeah, really and nice. I mean, I think I, I, I stayed there a couple. Of, no, I think he sold this place. Back in the day, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, it's just so secluded and nice. And you could, ri- I mean, across the, the valley, you could hear somebody chopping wood. It's pleasant. It's so pleasant. Good. And with all the mayhem that's been going on, I just didn't want to be around people. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could call it paranoia if you want. I call it just being practical. and totally. like. But I found a ton of spots up there. I found a really good street gap that you'd like, Kelly. It's got like little tiny kickers on both sides, but it's about like nine foot. What? Right? So it's kickers like this. It's like a bump to bump, bump, pretty much. And then it's a drop in the middle of like three feet, so it really feels like a like it's a big gap. Get hurt? Like what? Mm. Kind of yeah. like that. What, what was that one street gap? Uh, they would skate back in the day. It was Van like, Owen one? Van yes, Owen. exactly. Van yeah, exactly. Van Owen. The one, the one that you always go to go to, and you always have to try and remember where it is, even though it's always <laughs> on Van Owen. Like, oh, <laughs> I never skated that spot, but that was that thing hard to skate. It looked. It was. Different. It had like a really short, little, tight takeoff, mm. right? So you did the kickback deal, you know, yeah. where you go forward, and if you don't get your speed right, you. You know, it's like you're going off like a massive jump ramp. Yeah, you know, like the aerial bail. Yeah. Like that, but it was a good one. Yeah. Bastion, Cavalerial kick. Yeah. Back. That's oh insane. my God. You're fakey on that? Yeah. Yeah. He went fakey on it and cab, I think he half cab flipped it too. That's even That's gnarlier. A- <laughs> That's even gnarlier. That either one is insane. He did, he yeah. did half cab flip it too. But he definitely cab flipped it. Think about that. That makes no sense. <laughs> How do you snap going that fast on a three foot little kicker and go eight feet. I feel like a cab flip is, you could kind of, you know, fling it, right? I mean, but a half cab flip is very, you you, you got to be precise with that one. Yeah. You could win the rotation on the cab flip and get lucky, right? But yeah. half cab flip, you're probably going to hang up if you don't get it right. <laughs> yeah, true. It's not true. a fun hang up. Get yeah. that truck. No, that thing was hard to skate. It's kind of like that. It's, oh, wow. It's actually mm. like that, except... One side of the street gap is like a tighter bank and the other side is a little bit mellow. So the tighter one probably feels just like the Van Owen bank. What do you prefer, yeah. Jeff? If you were if you were skating a, something like that, would you prefer just a kicker or would you prefer kind of like a quarter pipe-ish, like steep bank? I, w- I would like just almost nothing. An illusion. A, an illusion bump. Yeah, so like a sidewalk and it's flat, but yep. it's kind of like... Yeah. One side's higher than the other? Yeah, but not downhill kind of thing. Yeah, right, yeah right, stuff right. like that's fun to skate because it gives you a second... Because you're going faster over street gaps, yep. right? So you have to flip your board you know, a little bit quicker at that speed. It'll help you slow down a little bit. You ever skate like, the one in uh, Barcelona, Be- Bezos, the, the, the hip one? The wave. Uh, the wave? Oh, yeah, I skated that once. Do you like that one? Because there's no really... Uh-huh. Definition of the of the bump, but where to where to ollie? Yeah, it's a wave. We're this is skateboarding. We're not surfing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's my excuse for sucking on that thing. <laughs> That's Truly. a good excuse. Uh, it's hard to skate. It's like a wave, right? So there's no like takeoff point. Yeah. So if you miss it, you do that like yep. like um at the mercy of everything. Um. So yeah, it's hard to skate. It's yeah. hard to skate that one. I was there with uh, Mark Appleyard when he broke his arm. It started. Yeah. To, it started to sprinkle there, and yep. he was going to do a nolly back big spin, I big believe. Spin or bigger spin, or and it right when he bent down, it just whipped out, just with a little bit of rain, and yeah, uh, boom, I'm right into the bar. Mark's ever slammed. Oh, you know, like he just always never got hurt. He was just amazing, and like how because he was just so good, right? That's the problem. Yeah. Jason Renan broke his arm there too. Oh, Jason Renan nice. broke his arm. Put your board down, whatever trick you feel like doing, boom, bang. Is that nice? Well, that was Mark, right? Mark has just like picked up things so quick and did them so smooth, so fast. And uh, But yeah, he wouldn't, he wouldn't get hurt that much. He didn't take bad slams. He fell, he took slams, but he, ta- he took them the way that he skated, like it got out of them really well. Yeah. And stuff. Uh, right, right. Yeah. He's been ripping right now. Yeah. Yeah, he's been skating really good. Yeah. Notice that. I've been watching him skate in that bunch. Such yeah. an amazing skater. Just this kickflip back five O's down like hubbas and stuff. You're sure. just like, wow. Trade like, flip, no like, slides. 
Huh? Super lazy oh. kick flip lines. You're like, whoa, it's the same with the nolly heel flip, the nolly kick flip, nose slides and crooks. Just yeah. not even trying now. Yeah. In the background, those looking pretty epic. Is which, that one, epic? which one? This is the red one back in there. That's back Raj's uh, Santa Cruz it's Ever Slick. Or dressing board. It's, that's a dress. I never had that one, but I had the black dress in Ever Slick when they first brought those, you know, uh, Ever Slicks out in I think the early 90s or something. They were so steep. Yeah, but I had black. I keep looking at that, going, "Nah, dude, that looks nice and uh, pretty good." <sighs> what's your what, what's your board setup? What what size board do you ride? This is my board right here. Let's see it. Let's, <laughs> let's check this out, man. Let's get a little. Yeah, okay. uh, what have we got already? Right this what is, is that? Kind of like a footbally shape, where like the side rails there's no flat side rails, so it kind of yeah, it bows a little. Out. Yeah, I like that. Every now and again on boards, you know. You say so eight and a half. Good. Outline shape and no straight rails, so that when you snap your three flips or nolly back set flips and nolly front set heels, you don't get as much meat right here, mm. you know. But sometimes I like that, you know, I like that kind of thing. But yeah, it's eight and a half inches. The okay. trucks are, I think, one, four, six, stage sevens. They're really nice. I love rail. that you're still holding on to the stage sevens, you know. They call them anodized, but yeah. I think it's ancast. Uh, sorry, um, um. Powder coated, I think. Oh yeah, I know you got a chip in your nose, man. What happened, bro? What's that? Out? There, yeah, a chip in there. Yeah. I said I skated. I've, I've skated this board twice. Wow. Um, but yeah, I ride fifty-four wheels. I think I'm, these are Swiss burns. I think. Mm-hmm. These small grip, pretty standard. I love that. I, I've been riding a big board. I was riding a nine-inch board. Wow. And then I rode an eight point eight seven five. Like I usually ride eight three eight to eight five. Okay. Like the whole of that Vans video was eight three eight to eight five, but I'll ride filming wheels on any spot. Really? Sometimes, I, yeah. Just some days I can't be fucked pushing. I just want to like a smooth ride. I ride filming wheels a lot. These are actually ninety eights, so quite soft. Oh wow! Okay. But I was riding the street, you know, so sliding tricks. So I, I kind of bounce around between these, but mostly fifty four to fifty kind of six kind of deal, and eight and a half to nine inch board. He's are you? Quiver. Yeah. Are you a um, uh, got to set up a new board maybe every other time you skate, or do you like to ride them till it just you yeah, can't ride them anymore? I used to be a bit, a lot more pickier. In fact, very picky with how like steep they were. I didn't like mm. super steep boards and in a batch and then a super flat board. Right. I like the consistency to it. So you know the boards I rode for most of the years, I always tended to pick the flatter than the steeper ones. Okay. You know? um, but now and in the last bunch of years, I don't care. I ride anything. Give send me a board and film on it. <laughs> I'm gonna send you a seven seven five. <laughs> seven seven five. Seven point five. Yeah. You ride a seven seven five. I ride seven seven five. Do you? Yeah. What size wheels? Fifty. Fifty mil wheels. Yeah, man. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. And, and you've skated your best with that size. Yes. Like when you you feel like I mean maybe today you feel like you're skating your best ever. But when you skated your best ever, whichever, whenever that was, what size did you ride? Same as that? Uh, just about, yeah. 775. I, I've been on that for a long time. But I will say, Raj has influenced me a lot skating these curves because, you know, I put I put rails on my 775, Jeff, and they were like this close together. It's literally <laughs> like they were, yeah, they, were, they were super. Like getting the Twix from the store. I yeah. swear, <laughs> the left and right. And then... um. I got a, I set up a two five, I set up a two five, you know, a little wider rail. Yeah. So it's, it's been working for me, but if I'm going to go out and like really street skate, the seven, seven, five. You snap and catch a board and take shinners and stuff like that. The cruises are a little. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like all those retro boards we have access to now or retro shaped boards or new shaped boards. Mm-hmm. Right. Like they're fun. They're fun for cruising. Yeah. I don't usually ride like those freaky shapes and things like that. I like basic, like retro shapes, you sure. know, clean retro shapes, um, but not like none of the freakish kind of ones, you know, or, or the funny shaped noses and things like that. Or Full fish tail. Crab rails. Yeah. Cause stuff, if that hits you in the leg oh. on another trick, oh, yeah. it can cause some damage, right? So I'm always aware I'd rather have like rounded edges on the edges of my board yeah, uh, so that I can skate a little bit longer. But no, I pretty much ride, I, honestly, I'll ride anything. When I, I feel like when I rode, when I start, when we skated a lot of rails and stuff like that, I rode a, sm- a slightly smaller board. Interesting. Yeah, but I, I always found when I felt like I was skating my best, where I felt just loose and just loving skating and be able to go as fast as you want, 
Um, I was riding 54 mil wheels on a smaller board than I ride now. Around about eight to eight and a quarter is I think most of the stuff I ever did that was like bigger was around about that, which is not super big. Right. But it was also very hard to get wider boards a few years ago that were in good shape. It's true. Yeah. I always pushed for the bigger board than pushed for the smaller board. I was that little kid at the skate park that had the board that they shouldn't have had. Okay. <laughs> With the hat over the head and your head looked like a pea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Board like that. And the board was like uh, me with the build down force. I'll like grow this. into it one day. Yeah, it was. And I'd, I'd get the boards on the guys that I was psyched on. So it should be. Yeah, so I do I do take fun in, in riding whatever now, you know, more so. But, and I was definitely much pickier with my boards and stuff a while back than I am now, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, if you felt like the best skating you were doing was on the sm- little smaller board, like, why not go back to that now? Or because you're just... My kinda... body's changed and I'm different. Yeah. You know, like, I'm sure. a, the way that I skate's different now. It's what it is. Mm-hmm. And um, I always, like I said, I always liked the bigger board. I always pushed for that. Like, eight was a big board, yeah. you know, in the mid-90s. That was a big board. Yeah. You know, Definitely. and I always rode as a younger kid, bigger wheels because they lasted longer, right? I'd get 56s, 57s because within a few months, they'd be 54s right, and then right. they were ready to go. Yeah. Uh, or I could flat spot them, keep riding them, flat spot them again until they went round again. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. Did you ever try, sometimes when I, when I was younger and I would get a little flat spot, I would take like my grip tape or sandpaper and I would try, try to, to sand the whole wheel to try to get rid of the flat spot. You ever do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did that. I, you know, I put them in a drill and spam them around with a chisel <laughs> to take it off. And I did put did, did all of the above, like make it get an extra few days out of the board, the wheels, the shoes. In fact, I put duct tape on my shoes today. I had a duct tape kind of day. Let's see. Right here. Oh, you put so it on the, the inside, right? I bled through. Actually, I've been... Let's see those feet of yours, I've just the basic canvas kind of vans and like been psyched on them. <laughs> Wait a minute. If I'm not mis- mistaken, when you were coming on the show, weren't they just about to re-release your uh, first van shoe? Was that, is that correct? Yeah, we did. We did a, a bunch of short runs last year and into this year. Like okay. right now, it's online and stuff like that. Sure. Um, but I, I wore them a bunch. I don't have any of them at the moment, to be honest with you, mm. um, with this kind of like lockdown a yep. little bit. I had a bunch of errors, so that's just what I've been skating in. Mm. But I still skate in those. I have a pair here, actually. We did we did some about a couple of weeks ago, my crow shoe for my board company. Let's yeah, let's see those things. I have them, I have them right, right here. Yeah, we did these. Pretty epic. Oh, oh wow. That was sick. The colorway is proper. That is color dope, is dude. Dope. We yeah. Did, we did you know, so I, skated in, I skated in those, too. I skated in those, too, but... I've just been enjoying. I like looking down and seeing black canvas eras. It just gets me psyched. Because this is going on. This is twenty years, right? Twenty years on vans. Ninety eight, and at the end of nineteen ninety eight, the shoe came out in ninety nine. So like twenty years. Is that crazy. Been, that's plus. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So over twenty years, man. Twenty yeah, twenty one. Really. Oh wow. Legal to drink. You're legal. <laughs> I know. Finally. <laughs> yeah. When I first moved to the US, I got off the plane and went from LA to Huntington Beach. I uh, went to walk down 2nd Street in Huntington Beach, which is parallel to Main Street. Got out of the house, which was Per Wellness house, if I remember. Oh. Across the road, a police guy was there. He's like, how old are you? 18. You got any ID? Nope. Go back Shane inside. I'm like, huh? Yep, go back inside the house. That was my uh, introduction to America. Why did he tell you to go back inside? But I think there was a curfew after 10 o'clock if you were under 18 in Huntington Beach because oh. of all those riots. In like the, would have been, I don't know what year, I can't remember, but a few years before I moved there in, in 94, mm. riots. And so I must have looked like I was under 18 and he was just exercising his uh, authority. Sure. Uh, that was my introduction to the U.S. And you, so you came here at 18? Yeah, July 2nd, 1994. Wow, you remember the date. Yeah. That's incredible. Two <laughs> days before the 4th of July. What time did your plane land? <laughs> Early evening, it was dark. See? <laughs> Light in LA. It's like being in a casino or something. No, I love that because, you know, the pe- when you remember a day and a time, and it, it means a lot to you. What you we know? Yeah. It's 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 that, you know, moment in time. I love oh, that. Everyone remembers uh, the first time going to California or going to like the, the, the skate spots of their dreams, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's what that's what it is, you know. Like you get to the Southern California and you just want to see see those spots, you know, and see what they look like. You see them in a video, you have a dude that you're psyched on, like the way he skates, and you, you know, you see a trick that you think's gnarly, like a Jeremy Ray backside heel flip or whatever it might be. You want to see what that looks like in real life. Can you jump over it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, God damn that one. That's yeah, exactly. you either get, you're like getting a slap in the face right. or you get a free pass. You know, you don't know. Yeah. You pick that stuff. It's funny. Cause uh, mine was, uh, I, I definitely remember the first time I went to Barcelona. Cause that mm. for me going to Barcelona was huge. What time yeah, you land? Too. All this. I remember that too. Day in the morning. That felt like the world was opening up a little yeah. bit to street skating. Yeah, like, totally. Like, you didn't realize there was this. There wasn't those filming trips though prior to kind of that period of skating when Barcelona and yeah. Paris and places became a, a so kind of state the of street skaters. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we, there was the resources weren't really there too, right? Sure. Like we weren't just being flown over to go skate. But there was a period where there was a lot of videos being made, all the girl videos and all the other brand videos at the time, right? Yeah. We were all filming all over the place. There was a period of time where it would show up, it'd be three in the morning, you'd be in Miami, you'd be in the middle of this freaking industrial area, you'd show up, you'd go, there's Eric Costin. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen him in LA last Friday at the Wilshire Red. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That actually happened yeah. with Costin in Miami at that Blue Hubba. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, wow. I remember getting there going, what? You're, yeah, you're filming. We're, we're doing it. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Yeah. What year was yeah. that? That was another side of the world to show up at a spot and freaking. Like 99, 2000. 99, 2000? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, it would have been, if that would have been after the Manic Matty video, probably, or yeah. just around that period. But that kind of stuff, right? Like that hadn't happened in skating. It was definitely a very important time in skateboarding when we look back, right? Like that 90s kind of progression. Sure. You know? When you guys but, go out in the videos, then the skaters like myself saw that you could start going to Barcelona and these new places. To oh, skate. yeah. That was yeah. wild. That didn't, yeah. we didn't think that was going to be possible, really. Did you travel a lot when you were growing up as a skater? Would you go to like local towns and places? Oh, skating? yeah. I mean, I never, I remember going to San Francisco for the first time mm -hmm. when I was in, uh, yeah. seventh grade or something and I, and I was pure seven I went to EMB it, yeah, it was same. it was full skate tourism dude you know and like yeah. my friend's mom was just like what the hell are you guys looking at <laughs> yeah. like, like dude this these, this is called hubba this is where dude this is like a lavarlic bride did some shit like like you were on a family trip yeah, not a skate yeah. trip yeah and, yeah and we me and my friend were just tripping out on this random hubba ledge you know with homeless people probably yeah there. and they were like what like Pier 7, what's cool about this place? I'm like, dude, these good manual pads to balance on wheels, you know? Balance it's on wheels. Like a it, legendary yeah. spot. <laughs> but yeah. uh, you, do, you remember those places, man? Yeah. You remember those places and that. I still get like that, you know, it's, it's it's when I get to certain cities that are just full of skate spots and you're not, you know you're not going to get kicked out as much. And, mm -hmm. You know? It still feels like that. But that period, people didn't realize, I think, we, we used to skate UC Irvine in the middle of the day while class was on. Doors open. <laughs> no one cared. All the doors open. None of the teachers, anyone really bothering you because you're not really bothering anyone. And you just move through the area. So you would never stay in one spot because you would be disturbing the area if you did. So you had to get your tricks in and move on to the next spot. Right. There was a lot of that. There was a lot of exploring. And then everyone had access to video cameras. All of a sudden, we all had cameras. Yeah. You know, like, so I'm filming you, you're filming me, you know, the guy on the top of the van's filming everyone, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. there's like nine cameras in the van. No, I, totally. There, was only, there yeah. was only two pro skateboarders I could think of that were filming the other pros were you and Jamie Thomas. Because oh. I, Jamie. you could see you guys in the background and I was like, how, is Jeff Raleigh filming that? I remember the line at the 16 where Arto does the half cab nose blunt and then you do front nose or he does front board down the rail. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you filmed that, right? Yeah, I was in San Francisco. Yeah, that's... I, I was, think that's just a filming trip, you know, just a film for for that video, I think. How, how would that work? Were you and French Fred film, or was it Ewan filming that at that point? No, Ewan wasn't around at that point. Like, filming down in Southern California. He was living in San Francisco at that time, if I uh, remember. I knew Ewan from, from England, um, because Ewan's from Scotland, like, mm -hmm. way north in Scotland, super far up. And... Uh, he, he kind of was a sponsored skater for Santa Cruz and Vans and I think Indy and maybe even OJ or something. Um, but he was a good skater and he lived down kind of south from Liverpool and then he lived up in Liverpool for a little while. So I knew him before he, I even moved to America. 
Oh, okay. So I knew you and, you and Bowman as a, as a skater. Like I was a skater and then I moved to the US. So it was only years later, I think I called you and asked him to come down and help, help me film because I was getting overwhelmed with the filming. So yeah. was he a filmer before that or was he, were you just yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, he was filming for, you know, all the brands up in, in uh, SF and 411 and everything like that. Oh, okay. You know, hmm. and uh, I asked him to come down and stay with me and, and film and help me because I just couldn't, we were skating so much and filming so much that I, just, I couldn't keep up with even um, figuring out how to really organize all of the footage, even yeah, though I had everything safe and everything mostly digitized. I couldn't, it was, it got to a point where I couldn't keep up with, with storing stuff properly. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was filming so much as well as skating and it got to a point, you know, that needed to be, you know, I needed to kind of put the camera down a little bit because I was filming too much. I'm not taking away from my skating. I just couldn't keep up with doing both. Yeah. I was doing it because I just enjoyed skating. So it was a way to, for us to go out, do whatever we wanted. And if we find a spot, film it. Yeah. You right. Know? Pretty sketchy filming, though. Some of it. It's that. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, hold the camera. Fish eyes a little out of focus, but just freaking press record, damn it. <laughs> Did you <laughs> just get I it? I could have sworn when I saw the footage of you filming, you weren't filming with a VX1000. You had some other like little camera. The TRV900. I had all kinds of different cameras. I bought all kinds of different cameras and tried them. And I remember we I, we we had one, and I think it got smashed in like first five minutes or something oh, wow. well, i'm not joking it was it was like two minutes something oh wow that was the quickest i saw a camera be purchased and just smashed <laughs> <laughs> like someone hit it on a skateboard or you fell like while filming was that board hit the lens oh, oh man yeah. it wasn't me to hit the hit the camera it was a friend somebody hit the camera and just the camera was done it wasn't just the lens scratched it was smashed Wow. You know? Damn, dude. Um, but no, like, there was a lot of that going on. Like all those Century fish eyes that came out. Yep. You remember those? Like I remember going to Century up in LA to buy that lens. I remember ordering it and I remember like Ty the first <laughs> one. I remember going up. I remember Jamie coming up and staying with me at my house in Huntington Beach. And then we drove up to Century to pick our uh, fish eyes up because they came in. So we went up there together to pick them up and then skated the next day. Went straight to... What's that big white hubba that was in Hollywood that Jamie Jamie ripped it to pieces? He did like backside loop. It was about that wide oh. and kind of bevel. Yeah, I, I know you're talking. It was kind of a short run up a little bit, but short run up yeah. both ways, right? Yeah, I that, know what you're talking about. Cost yeah, it. He goes into dirt, the right? Punch, but we went straight huh? to that, and he did like a 180 50 50, 180 50 50, and a back lip on it. Oh wow! You yeah, know, yeah. I remember looking at the footage going. This is crazy looking. Look at this fish eye. Fish <laughs> yeah. You know? Wait, you filmed that? Yeah. Dude, that's so yeah. sick. Dude. Yeah, and then we went to, from that spot right then, we then went to Long Beach where I live now. We went to the Belmont Rail. Oh, the steep ass mm -hmm. one. And I, I was trying to nolly no slide it, but it was so steep that I got in first go. I'm like, yep, this is on. I'm doing this. Body and slam. Hit dude. The rail. The nolly hit the rail. Oh, <laughs> Wait, that's in wow. And it's, that was in the zero, a zero slam video. I remember in Sorry. Was it Sorry? You try fakey nose grind and you just yeah, died. Same thing. Oh, my same God. Same thing. And you know what? I, I tried that that day because I wanted to do, because I'd already filmed like a fakey nose grind revert at, uh, at the Wilshire. That's right. Yeah. And, right? So I wanted to do the biggest fakey nose. And I'd also done the 180 nose grind down the 15. So I'd done the fakey nose grind revert. And then I wanted to do the 180 nose grind fakey. And then I want to do the fakey, the biggest fakey nose grind that yeah. I could do. So I thought that was the biggest one I could do. And I got in, same thing. Got in the first go and thought, this, I got this because it's slow. Oh, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, totally. feels easy. A little bit steep. And exactly. So yeah. I got in first go. And next go, I thought, I'm going to stand on it. And I went to stand on it. And there wasn't a rail alert. So I missed it. <laughs> Did that twice on that right? Listen to this shit. Oh. That's the pier, right? It's the Belmont Veterans Memorial Pier. I took those two slams. One of them was in the Zero Misled Youth video where I tried to nolly nose slide it and just freaking at shit. Then I tried to fake you nose grind it in the, a flip video and hit my face on the floor. And then in the last flip video, I tried pier? to do a flip slide down over, at the end of that same pier, there's a rail over the water. Right. And I yep. grinded the rail over the water a year earlier at one o'clock in the morning. Yep. Right, with Joe Krolik, carried a generator over, went at one in the morning, grinded it over the water, and um, 
But, be, but and then so I wanted to lip slide it. So I went really early in the morning, first light with Crolic, the lip slide it, and it had bird shit on the rail. This is like over <laughs> the ocean at the end of the pier. It's like a 10 stair rail over, over the ocean. So if you fall off, you're in the ocean. And so it looked like it was going to slide. So I waxed the end of it because there was bird poo all on the end of it. And, <laughs> and I broke my ankle, snapped my leg on the oh. outside. So that particular Belmont Veterans Memorial Pier has absolutely smashed me to pieces. <laughs> it took two, like, basically, like, full-body slams, right? Like, which you take, what, five of them in your life, ten of them in your life, yeah. like, <laughs> if you're bad, like, if you bomb. Should we petition for Long Beach to rename it uh, Jeff Raleigh Pier? Well, I wanted redemption, right? You know, <laughs> but every time I've gone there, it's just ripped me to pieces, except when I grinded the rail across the water, I didn't fall in the water, everything was fine. Well, at least you won one time. I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly, that's what I'm saying. The odds were pretty bad at that spot for me. <laughs> but you, but wanted, yeah, to, you yeah. wanted to lip slide the same one that you 50-50'd. Yeah, over yeah, the water. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like that's always what I wanted to do, but I grinded it in the night first to see if it grinded, what it felt like, you know what I mean? And how, was it, was it easy to grind or a little uh, bit of a battle? Yeah, it wasn't hard. Okay. It, like, Rails, straight, low rails that are square, once you're on them, sure. if you look and you, you can see down the rail straight, like they're, they're not that technical, right? Mm. Like cave and grinds is pretty much what they are, right? But, um, you know, so that, it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't hard of a trick, but if you fall, you're, you're fucked. Right, you're right. In <laughs> you're in the ocean at one o'clock in the morning at the end of a pier, upside yeah. down. That sounds pretty shitty. Yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, just skating a rail at one in the morning above well, the, the ocean. There's no sounds... light. Think about it. I know. It's no not... In the dark. So we put generators because you could just see the the ocean flickering below. Oh, it oh, must have just looked like a black pit. Yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> Wait, when you guys were skating uh, the Wilshire rails, did you guys go? You had to go there super late night, right? I think late. Yeah, if I remember rightly, I remember. Anytime we skated it and we had no issues, mm. and a lot of times the security there, they were fine. You know, they really didn't bother you, or if you were respectful, they were they were good. You know, um, but it got to a point there where it was a dash and run. Right. Yeah. Like, you, did you ever skate it like that, where like you knew that you'd get two goes? I honestly never even got a chance to skate it. I always went there, but you get kicked out so fast. I didn't. You know, I was a kid at that. And then when I noticed, grinded, it was like that where. The guy came out and I had to go and I had to go back, run back up to the top, but not take the full run up that you want to take because yeah. you just, you don't want somebody to maybe see you. Yeah. You know, I remember that. And that was the last, I think that was the last time I ever skated it. And then oh. it kind of, after that, it started to be difficult to skate that spot. I always see people who are like paying off the security guard or, you know, stuff like that. I never had to do anything like that. We skated it quite a bit, but it was for a short period of time. It wasn't like over the course of two years. It was, I think it happened quicker than we remember. Oh, wow. Okay. Did I always trip out when you went and nose grinded it? It wasn't like you did it the proper way where you, you stood up on it. And like a lot of people now, they do like the pinch, the 180 oh, yeah. nose grind, and they pinch it a little bit. Yeah, I do that sometimes, and it kind of bothers me, but it happens. It happens, but I thought it was amazing you did because that's such like a, a gnarlier way to do that. You're trick. standing like, up. You're on standing it. Standing that's how up. it should be. Yeah, yeah. I, totally. Like I, I, it should be like no no that. nose touching the rail either. It should I mean, be all truck. I mean, dude, I that would be ultimately. I, I just there was a period where I just that particular kind of trick. Um, like I was able to get in it cleanly. Yeah. I was so confident I could get in it, but it was whether it shoot out if I didn't put my weight on it. If you put your weight on it too late and it's already doing that, that's you kind of fucked when you stand up on them like that. And mm -hmm. that's why people just pinch them, right. rub, rub their foot against the side of the ledge while they're doing which I do too. Certain spots, you kind of have to do it like that a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Like a spot, I did that trick today. I did a one in rose ground, came, came out forward but the ledge was angled so the ledge was kind of like this mm. so the, top of the ledge wasn't flat and then the angle here was a little bit off mm. you know so i have to do it a little bit crooked because it, otherwise it would fall off it wouldn't stay on the edge yeah yes. totally it, yes. just it just depends you know but you know that was kind of like i don't know i, I don't know that rail i think i grinded it another night too but that was the only time i ever skated it was steep too that one was steep. oh the wilshire yeah wilshire yeah. Yeah. yeah, Ed Templeton shot that photo of me 
don't know what I know. I was kind of thinking really? it was in the mag and thrasher or something that day, but Ed shot that photo. What? Right. And Dan Sturt printed it. Oh, seriously? Thrasher. Yeah, I begged Dan. I begged him. Yeah, because we had to get the trick fast, right? Because we were getting kicked out. So I just ran up and like tried it. And I don't know how many times it took. Maybe three, yeah. four. Wow. Three, what? Three, four. You had to do it quick because I was getting kicked out. It might have even been quicker than that. I have the footage somewhere. I'll have a look and I'll, t- I'll get back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, let us know. goes it took. I had to go around the block a million times. For sure. Um, Dude, if there was like, you know, what, does French Fred do that? He, did he do that with the Sorry video, like the behind the scenes? Didn't he do that a while back? Yeah, there was well, a um, Thrasher thing. So like whatever yeah. was in it, some of those videos, I think he's put up on Thrasher and places like that, right? Yeah. 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 Like, still, I mean, everyone, a lot of that people are doing that, right? Like we, we all want to see... Well, a lot of that stuff, right? Like, totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, so it's it's nice that the guys that like filmed a lot of that stuff are like, did you see the stuff Greg did, Greg Hunt? I don't know did if I did. Field? The oh, 16 millimeter footage? All the footage he's been showing just live to people from his house, yeah. like opening up his drives and wow, stuff like that. Wow, like, dude. Shoot right? on Instagram. Yeah, Jacob you know, Rosenberg does that a lot too. Yeah, dude, that stuff. Now yeah. that's from my youth. Yeah. Right? Like I watch that shit and go, you kidding me? Ali 540s <laughs> on the channel, Danny? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so good. No, but uh, yeah, Rosenberg footage is priceless. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. All priceless. these guys who were just around at that time, man, it's just, oh. You think anything will ever happen like that from that period, like of skating? I don't want to mute. Do you know what I mean? Like, the generations are skating. They make documentaries. They do that kind of sure thing. You think anything in the nineties and like that will ever happen? That's a random question that, cause we're having fun here and just talking about skateboarding. Sure. Right. There will I, be for sure. I would love to see it. Yeah. What to see, wait, to see a documentary about what the, no, like this generation. Skateboarding is just amazing. Oh yeah. I mean, so is the eighties. So is the seventies. Sure. So is mm-hmm. right now. Right. Like I'm not that guy that's like super nostalgic or traditional. I'm the modern traditional, right. You always have to look forward. But you right. have to respect what came before you. Totally. Mm-hmm. Did you guys? Did you see the um, the Michael Jordan thing they did on uh, what was last it? Last dance. The last dance. I think I did see that. Yeah. It, you it, know it, what film was really good? Space Jam. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But dude, like, if there was a documentary on like the flip team during those eras, that would I would watch that. Or just about almost any team the too. Period of skating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just the period of skating. That, yeah. Like, yeah. For me. 95 to like 2003 mm-hmm. would be, I want to watch that. Cause I, those were the times where I was watching you guys skate and it was, I would love to see the behind the scenes of that stuff of what was going on. You know, I feel like that would be a huge undertaking, you know, but it's yeah. so well worth it. But it's just nice to see that a lot of that video footage is kind of kept and it's safe. Yeah. Right. And it's yep. accessible. And the guys that filmed it still love skateboarding and are still making skateboard videos and are still passionate about filming skateboarding. And, you know, and some of those people are, you know, moving on and going on to bigger things and doing a lot of like bigger commercial projects, which is amazing to see. Totally. Yeah. You know, and it's like guys like Greg and Fred and those guys, you know, so talented, yeah. such incredible eye. Like Fred has such a beautiful eye for framing, Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you know, and like that that's just it's such an artistic thing to have you know i always felt feel like that we like that we're fortunate to have the guys that we have in skating you know sure sure like a minute Mahdi, the long it. rolling long so you guys you know what i did do is i made a film with greg greg hunt for yeti oh sick oh. finding ground cheers man it's a yeti <laughs> yeah, they, they go with the drinkware and stuff <laughs> and uh, amazing brand but I've been sponsored by them for like about, I don't know, a year or something like that. I've been working with them, amazing mm-hmm. brand. But we made a film right at the end of that Vans video. I made kind of like a video that shows skate side of stuff that I do. So some of the skate manufacturing, some of the printing and some of kind of like the graphic development and actual skateboarding and knife making and some of the guiding that I do. So we made a film um, that was on a film tour right now for Yeti, but because of this pandemic, all the film tour got canceled. Oh wow! And the tour had just started happening a couple of months ago. I think we did. We did a few premieres. We did one in Santa Barbara that I went to, and it, it's the Yeti film tour. They had like I don't know twelve videos, and and uh, one of the videos was a film that um, Greg Hunt made, and it was kind of like my story, kind of circular, where it shows a little bit of everything that I do, you know, yeah. in my life, kind of thing. 
including skateboarding. So yeah. a little bit of a different project. Like I've never really, I've done some outdoor related videos that have nothing to do with skateboarding, mm -hmm. right? But this is something that just shows all of the shit that I do all in kind of one go. Wow. Um, so pretty stoked on that. You is know? that, that I know you said it's on the little tour right now. But well, are, yeah, that's is, the is thing it? right now. But because of the tour got canceled, I don't know yeah. when it's going to drop online. Oh, okay. Um, but any minute, yeah. you know, and it's a full video. I think it's 12, 12 minutes or something like that. And it, it um, shows a ton of stuff. Yeah. You guys still there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you yeah. hear us? Yeah. Just about. <laughs> You know, so I did that. I, you know, I did that since that band's video too. You know, kind of made that. Right. And, uh, that was pretty fun. We did a bunch of like random stuff. Did a bunch of helicopter stuff with Greg. You know, flew him over mountains and showed him a bunch of different sheep terrain, wow. a bunch of different areas in our local mountains um, to kind of show what I do when I'm not skating and the things that I do to keep me in shape for skating. Sure. Um, yeah, I think we were talking about that last time you were here. Was the uh, yeah? I think we'd start oh, the hiking. Film the hike. Yeah. You know, I just think it's cool that brands like that give a shit about skateboarding and, and sure. they're interested in it enough to kind of like want to be involved in it because mm. they see how rad it is. Yeah. You know? Totally. Truly. You know, our, like just our skateboard culture is just amazing. Man, you're nonstop, man. How I mean, you... just with the outdoor stuff and the skating and filming these videos and the, it, yeah. you're going, you're, man, I love it. You gotta live. I know. I feel. How did you get sponsored by Yeti? Through the outdoor stuff that I do, um, they reached out. Actually, the production a production company um, reached out to me. Um, that uh, called Farm League. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of Farm League? I've heard of them. Yeah. Oh, you know those guys. It's a production company in Santa Monica, I think it is. Mm -hmm. That Greg works for. They reached out to me. They wanted to make a video on me to to show the stuff that I do in the outdoor and how it relates to the stuff I do as a skater. Oh, okay. You know, like it's very physical. What we do as like outdoor guides, you know, super physical. So we wanted to show some of that so people would see what the majority of the time that I'm out there, what I'm doing mm -hmm. and, to sh and to show what we do, the approach that we have for that stuff. Um, you know, so it kind of came out through that, through the, the outdoor stuff that I do and the hunting stuff that I do. They reached out to me through that you know, as well as through the production company and kind of just went from there, started talking to them and, and then uh, our hunting outfit, which is called Kika, Kika Outfitters in California. It's a hunting outfit. Um, they, sponsored, uh, they sponsored our outfit first, like a year or so ago. And it was, it was such an amazing, just rad people to work with, you know, um, and, it, and it enjoyed kind of, um, communicating with the people in the brands an amazing company mm -hmm. and it kind of just went from there so to speak you know they first wanted to make a film on me because they see all of the outdoor stuff that i do as a guide and then they see that i'm a professional skateboarder <laughs> and they just think that's something different and unique sure. you know and yeah. it's just me freaking doing my shit yeah yeah um you know so that really i mean i use i've used their gear for, for a long time like they make incredible stuff and we go through that stuff so much you know I have, I have so many big big ass coolers for all of the i mean there's a buffalo right there that's a pretty good buffalo <laughs> wow damn dude you know? and uh it's about seven to eight hundred pounds of meat that comes off that animal so you gotta put it somewhere so it doesn't spoil sure <laughs> right and so to me like having something that keeps the meat so it doesn't spoil so you can actually get all of the best nutrients out of it and and, uh, and it's preserved the right way is part of the process yeah. a part of respecting the process after you know the animal's life's been taken you know, yeah taken, uh, to to your plate in the kitchen you know or wherever it might be um, how do yeah. you preserve i mean is it do you just freeze it is that the right proper way to preserve meat or yeah, what much. just for freeze it yeah pretty, you can season it and do stuff like that depends on what it is yeah but you asked you know they reached out to me through the outdoor stuff and they are um you know they're very active in kind of surf the surf industry you know they've done a lot of they have a couple of guys who sponsor and surf but they've never really done anything with skate Right. And they all like a lot of the guys that work there grew up skateboarding. Mm -hmm. Everybody been exposed to our skate culture mm -hmm. now. And a lot of the guys that work in the brand skate or grew up skateboarding, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, once you started communicating with them and, you know, had the similar, you know, idea of how things should be. Um, it's been fun. It's Amazing. been fun. I, mean, I think they're going to dabble a little in skate, you know, That's and uh, awesome. 
And that, that's a rare thing because they don't, it's the kind of brand, like we need companies to come into our industry that are going to do good things. Totally. You know, and that wanting to do good things and wanting to be like, you know, wanting to open up opportunities for people like creatively or kids even, you know, sponsor events, be a part of things that, you know, keep the stream alive. And Absolutely. so for me, like a brand like that, that just comes in and wants to be supportive and wants to be respectful about that and wants to take baby steps and do it the right way. Um, that's sick. Totally. You know? Yeah, What's definitely. The they make great stuff. An amazing brand. Oh, you know? quality, quality oh. stuff. Yeah. And the marketing guy grew up skating. So he knows what we do, Man. you know, and he's stoked on it. Yeah, tell them to hit us up. <laughs> you have a cooler. Send you the cups, right? Dude, thank you for Love that. Love them, yeah. man. I know. I was like, when they showed up, I was like, what is this? Yeah, where did this come from? <laughs> thank you for that uh, hookup, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, we, uh, I use them all the time. I like the, uh, like the Raj has here, the tumblers. Mm -hmm. I like the tumblers. To I'll tell you which one's good for skating. This freaking thing. It's like a couple of gallons. Oh, wow. That thing kicks ass. <laughs> is that a you can be at any, you can be at the biggest ditch in the world. You can be at Bob's ramp. Right down yeah. in San Diego, about to drop in to do the mega ramp, and you won't run out of war at the session. And it's cold. Okay. You know. Yeah, we're a big fan. We they make quality stuff. Yeah. I think I've had my Yeti tumbler for years, actually. Mm -hmm. Still, it's like it's brand new. We have those koozies too. Yeah, the koozies. No bullshit, right? And they, they they last well, and they're you yeah. know, but it's amazing. yeah. So you know. Same old shit, been skating a bunch lately, which it. is nice. Gonna skate, you know, a bunch the next couple of weeks. Got a couple of plans, you know. Mm. Still to kind of get the, the board moving again. But that's what I'm kind of really focused on is just steadily just knocking away at the skating and filming and, yep. you know, shooting photos and just trying to be positive. Film another full street part. Oh, man, you know? I can't right. wait. Is it? Hopefully I'll, I can go faster this time somehow, you know. I always feel like that. Like I always want to just, that's the motivation. Next time, go faster next time. <laughs> Somehow, even though you're going slower every time. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a video? Not sorry. Oh my gosh. The American dream. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thank you. Is what it's going to be cool. How, what about when the pandemic and all this stuff settles down? Um, uh, like travel, any travel plans, maybe any, had, any place you want to go that you haven't been, maybe? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I had plans to like I've been spending the summer in England. You mm -hmm. know, where I'm from, Liverpool up north, which is north in northwest coast of England. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been spending the last couple of or last three or four summers there for you know two to three months, kind of thing through the summer period. Mm -hmm. I've been staying out there and like you know getting to spend time with my family, but also skating out there and filming is, is good for me. You know. Yeah, I feel, yeah, yeah comfortable when I'm home. So I had plans to do that. Like I was going out there in August to film for, you know, the summer mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I was starting to kind of, kind of plan those trips at, as I'm in Europe because I wanted to go to mainland Europe too, yep. to film. I want to go to Paris. There's some spots in Paris that need some attention. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, yes. There's some stuff in Barcelona too, but I haven't been to Barcelona. I don't know. It's like a, I might get stuck there. Yeah, yeah. it I happens. Know. You but that's leave. the plans for sure. Like get on, get on a bunch of trips and, you know, obviously health permitting mm. with everything, you know, like I, I, I uh, I'll, I'll just be for the meanwhile right now, just steadily knocking away, you know, sure. filming and skating. But yeah, you know, I do want to get on the road. You want to see Bob again? You haven't seen Bob since last show. Bob. Oh, oh yeah. The, yeah. Bob. Oh, oh there's okay. Bob. <laughs> Wow, he still looks not even a day older than he when he was here. Yeah, he hasn't aged. You no, know, it's gonna look like that forever. It's the beauty of it. Look at that! I love that. It's amazing. Just like that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, man. You want to see anything? You want to see a bear skull? Yeah, sure. A bear skull. Jeff's got all everything over there. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Gosh. Whoa! Look at that. Jeez. What? So that is. Uh, huge how did this skull hold white yeah how did how did you get that i know did you primer it you know bleach <laughs> it yeah i used spray paint spray <laughs> paint and then i, I used white out 3d yes. printer and uh spray paint that's what exactly that's what it is it's plastic yeah no but yeah no this is where I, i'm at my office but this is where i can like develop a bunch of and do all my knives i just got a new knife that is coming out soon right here this is a, a surgical knife oh damn Wow. Okay, so this is a removable razor blade on the front. 
How do you go about designing knives? Ah, well, they're all task driven, yeah. right? So what would you use it for? This is for fishing and hunting, mm-hmm. fishing mm-hmm. and outdoor, and it's for skinning animals and processing game, yeah. right? So you need to be able to change the razor blades like a surgeon because mm-hmm. you'd be doing it for a long time or you know. can be doing it for a long time. So nobody really made kind of like a quality one of these. Yep. So oh. this is kind of like a, a uh, kind of a folding version of... Where do you have your knives made? Do you made one here in the US or overseas? Uh, all over. You know, I make some domestically, a combination of outsourcing some of the machining um, and like we put some of them together ourselves and then mm. a, kind of a little bit of everything. Like I make some fixed blades domestically that are completely all the material is 100% US made mm-hmm. and US manufactured. But certain steels and certain materials, I just can't do them. I can't do the, some of the stuff I would like to do domestically. Yeah, I was, I was wondering, like, do you have to, like, if you come up with an idea and you bring it to your manufacturer, are they like, we can't do that? Like, we don't well, you have to that. know what the manufacturer can do before yeah. you talk to them, right? Like, yeah. And yes, they, they will say that, but um, you have to, like, you know, my process is once you find a factory that can make the product that you want to make, you need to know their manufacturing guidelines, what they do well, what they don't do well, mm-hmm. what they keep doing, no matter how much they try not to, for example, yeah. right? You have to learn the manufacturer and with knives, it's, that's extremely like important, right? Yeah. The quality of the knife, because it is a tool and can, you can hurt you if it's not handled well, or if it's not built well, you can cut yourself or some, So yeah. you want to make sure like the knives that I make, I make sure that I'm not sending a design to a manufacturer that's going to struggle to make it first yeah. and foremost. Or I ask that question really early on. I know you do this, but can you do this mm-hmm. kind of thing? Um, so there's a lot of that. And that's actually where it starts. Like, like here's another folder I just dropped. This folder came out, it's called the puncher. It came out like a couple of months ago. Yep. It's a little kind of like pocket knife. Right. And, um, this particular knife's like a line, line of lock, so it locks kind of from a locking mechanism in the middle. It moves, watch. Boop. Yep, yep. Oh, wow. Yep. Oh, oh, right. And the particular manufacturer I work with on this does line of locks extremely well. So that's why this design went to them. The last and thing you have, want is your little lock to break. Yep. Yeah, but also the last thing you want is a steel with another material that compromises the quality of the knife. You put the two wrong things sure. together or mm-hmm. you didn't know, so... You know, I, I try to go with what we do know. Don't take any any guesswork with knives because mm, of that. Right, right. And also we take baby steps with our machining, baby steps with our engineering so that we understand what it is that we're doing. So if we need to recreate it, we can do it again. Yeah. Have, you, have you developed anything that you have a patent on or anything like that? Or Have I developed it? I've developed stuff that I haven't been able to manufacture yet. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been having a hard time trying to make hat, like mini hatchets domestically. Mm-hmm. Been trying to figure out how to make make them in volume domestically, and I just can't find anybody to do some of the processes for me. Huh. For example, and then some of the factories overseas can't make the type of mini little hatchet I want to make. They don't have the machine capabilities, so I can't make that product right now. Um, what would you use like a mini hatchet for? Kindling, mm-hmm. fire starting. Whenever you need something a hair bigger than a knife, you know, yeah, you need to scrape things like scrape wood, you know, in in uh, in bad weather. If you need bigger shavings to start a fire, I would use a hatchet. Mm-hmm. Like that knife you just showed us. What 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 is the purpose of that knife for? That's a little pocket folding knife for just everyday use. Everyday use, okay. Everyone, everyone would call it EDC, right? Everyday carry. Oh, okay. You know, so and, and and it's got you know a basic kind of clip, a nice sure. long clip, so it doesn't fall off your pocket easy because it's an everyday use kind of yes. thing, right? You um, can grip your board with that, right? Oh yeah. Hey, there you Ooh. go. Terrible use for a blade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I make these little ones for me, right? Just to grip my boards. Look at these little things. These are so fun. It's a file. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, but it's yeah, an yeah. File. So this is all textured. Yep. Wow. I can do this, hold this side, right? And it's molded in there and just rub the sides of the board and pull it out and, and then just come to the other side and grip it. Oh, I like that. I, I like the case. Grip like 400,000 boards with it. It doesn't really wear out. That case is amazing. Wow. Does it come with like a sharpening stone? No, no, it doesn't. I, we sold these a while back. These are just for me to use to grip my board. I made. Mean, just I, fun. I, I love it. it. That's right. Here's another one just for fun. And then check this one out. This one's pretty freaky. Look at that. See that? Whoa. Yeah. That's a file. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. And a little tiny blade. Right. It almost has a rub the sides a fire starter. Of board and then boom. Bang. Look how thick it is. That's oh, that's see, but that that's nice to have that that yeah, in your hand. Bad. Yeah. You just need super a cover for that thing. Yeah. 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 What else you got, man? Jeez, you doing everything. All kinds of stuff in this room, really. All kinds of stuff. <laughs> <I'm> gonna, <laughs> Do you have any old memorabilia, like skate memorabilia stuff in there? Like, Good question. Um, are you a, do you, are you a, oh. at my house, you know, that's the thing. I was going to be at my, I had loads of stuff. I have just, you know, hundreds of pairs of shoes and random samples that, you know, mm. uh. may or may not have been seen and same with boards and random stuff. I do have a lot of stuff at my house that I don't have here. So you do collect a lot of stuff. A little bit. Yeah. You know, and usually stuff that, like periods that you just remember, like, you know, like the propeller video, I have a t-shirt from the propeller premiere, I have t-shirts from like, you know, Thrasher Skater of the Year, like yeah. that, shit like that. Like I have just random shit. And then Steve Van Doren every now and again makes us something crazy, like a jersey with our name on the back. I have Rad. a bunch of random stuff like that. <laughs> so I had a lot of stuff stolen. I had my house broken into by these white power crackheads in Huntington Beach. Oh, I think you, mentioned that. I think you did I, mention I, that. I tried to say it nicely, but um, but they were they were bad people that broke into my house and they broke into my garage and they stole a lot of stuff wow. that was valuable to me. Like you know, all the stuff that I had that meant something to me. I had the did we talk about this on the last? We did a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We did, didn't we? Yeah, we yeah. did. We did. Do you are are you do you collect just your stuff, or are you a big collector of? No, I just have random. Random, things. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. I have quite a lot. Like I used to keep all of the stubs from every like band I would see, right? Like the ticket stubs. So mm -hmm. I have a bag with like every band I've ever seen, ticket stub, right. every skate premiere I've ever been to. Oh, wow. you would collect those stubs? Yeah, I just. I just used to throw them. You know, you get the wristbands. Sometimes they'd say whatever. It'd say the yeah. event on their DVS video premiere, sure. whatever it was. Right? You get all that crap. I, I have all of that still. I have a lot of like random shit. That's funny. Wow, that's you know, rad. Yeah. Throw them in a shoebox. I love yeah. stolen out my garage when my house got broken into. I had like an immense amount of boards and shoes and that's, like just custom random stuff. You know, that's that devastating. Wasn't replaceable, stolen. Jeff, are you yeah, part of the uh, the skater um, Tony Hawk skater one and two rebate? Yeah, uh, the, the the ones that are coming out again. You mean? Yeah, am I in the game? I'm in the game. Yeah. That's oh. Sick. Yeah. yeah, I was psyched on that. You know, that was a, such a fun experience. Like back in the day when those first came out, like testing all the games and so interactive. And all of the the software developers were like little kids. Every <laughs> one of them was like. Come up, come up, do a 360 kickflip for me. Come yeah. on, we need to film you again. And they didn't. They just didn't want to just hang out. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It's so dope. this time it's around. Come up again. Muska, come up. We need you to come up with the boom box. We need you to do a kickflip. Yeah. <laughs> so did they do all that stuff? or Because yeah. in the first. The... Uh, this time around, the, the development was a little bit different because a lot of that technology now is like a little more available or the, more the process is a little different. But we did, we did have to go and spend a full day you know, in the camera ball and all that crap. Face um, stuff. Everything, yeah. Every facial expression. You're in a you're in a ball of light and you get and you basically sit in a chair and it takes you in the middle of it. You feel like you're in Star Wars. It <laughs> takes you in the middle of it and you think you think the Emperor's gonna chop your head off. <laughs> but he doesn't, he turns all the lights on, and he just says, Smile. Next facial expression, angry, like this. Okay, next one. And you do that for like 30, 40 minutes, and your head starts feeling really it's pretty sketchy because I have that much light around you. You've never been exposed since birth to like that much light. <laughs> which some people freak out about. Um, but they did do their, you know, their whole thing. And they, they have been, like I said, they were back in the day, they, they blown us away how interactive they were making the game. Mm -hmm. They wanted to get it right. They right. wanted to get all of it right, right down to the wire. Yeah. I will say that about, about the, uh, the whole Tony Hawk video games, the first ones is they put the effort and time in to make sure that they got it right. Right. And they did. You know what I mean? They totally did. I think yeah. when Tony was here, he said that he landed 900, like after they had already developed the game. Yeah. He's like, hey, we need to like uh, get that in there. Like, don't worry, we're working on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about pressure. Yeah. No pressure. 900. <laughs> Amazing. Tony's an incredible, incredible person, incredible skateboarder. Fuck yeah. What he's done for skateboarding is just... 
you know, something else, you know, like I would like to thank him for that. Thank you for what you've done. Cause I think it's, it's games like that, that like keep reminding people how sick skateboarding is mm-hmm. and things it's like true. that, you know, yeah. video games, the, the guys like Bam, that like just are different, different people and they bring a different thing to the, to the table, but they make sure that skateboarding is shown in, you know, in, 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 a, light. Light, in a good light yep. that's beneficial to, to the industry and beneficial to the, you know, the act, yeah. you know, or, or respectful to it, you totally. know, so. I don't know, you know, like I think that the game's come out again in a few months, right, towards the end of the year, in like September, October, yeah. and I just hope people pick it up and it makes them want to skate. Yeah. And if it does that, like, then they've done their job. Man, I the love it. It looks fucking great. It looks, yeah, really cool. Yeah. The 4K yeah. remaster looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it looks like, I haven't really, uh, oh, I've, I've seen bits of it, you know, of what they're doing, um, but uh, no, I look forward to it. I look forward to it coming out. Interesting year for it to come out, right? Interesting yeah. time for it to yeah. come out. It's actually you the know? best time. Yeah, I wish it came yeah. out earlier. It's good. We playing it right now. Yeah, it's, that's true. It's around all the time. We got Tony Hawk on Vans. Do you see that? Oh that's yeah, absolutely yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah. How rad is that? So yeah. amazing. How did, how did that? When did that conversation start? Do you know? Uh, a while back, I think. I'm yeah. Pretty sure. yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Like steadily leading towards Tony Hawk needs to ride for Vans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I, I'm stoked. I think it's an amazing thing for the brand. I think it's a rad thing for skating, you know, and I think the timing of it's really cool too, you know, with all the Olympic stuff that was about to happen and, mm-hmm. you know, just a lot of stuff going on in the world that's good and bad, right? Like just difficult times that I think anything positive that we can do for people and just everything right now is, uh, is invaluable. And I think the video game and stuff like that is a positive thing that might you know, make people smile and make them enjoy life, you know? Sure. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked for that. I'm stoked that it's coming out this year in a year that we need positive things and skate that are rad after last year's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. true. Wow, yeah. Tony Hawk, you're back in it. Yeah, I mean, look at him, though. Like, how good of a skateboarder is Tony Hawk? Like, he, yeah. you see the stuff he He's did still learning tricks. Guy? 50th birthday, I'll just go and film 50 trips. I know. Yeah, didn't you just recently do some NBD? He did an NBD contest or something. It's supposed to be coming out soon, yeah. Oh, is it coming out yeah. still? It's like the it's guy's not, doing dude, NBDs. You ever skated with Tony? I know you have, Roger. You've skated mm-hmm. with him, right? Yeah. Not on vert, but yeah, I've, I've skated around with him. <laughs> you filmed him, right? Yeah. He slams. Yeah, he goes for it every time. Yeah, he does. Like, yeah. he he gets gnarly bad shitters, and he, like, he, Tony's a gnarly skateboarder. Yeah, no right? joke. They've been given that like tagline, like, Tony Hawk's gnarly, but Tony Hawk is fucking gnarly. Yep. Yep. You know, he is, you know, and he, he, he invented what we take for granted. Like, like Rodney Mullen did and like the guys that came before us. Yep. Yeah. It's true. We wouldn't be able to do what we do now without that. And the Jeff Rollies. Exactly. Hey, on a lighter note, we need to skate faster. <laughs> <laughs> it's our Ryan 56s. Look, the light's going down because it's getting dark outside. Man, I like it, though. You're looking very moody. (laughs) It's nice in here. It truly is. Hey, uh, this is sick. Look at this. Let's see. That's Dylan Reader. Oh, Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, that's right. My friend Ryan Allen shot this. It's Dylan holding, like, a knife that I gave him. But look how sick this photo is. Let's see it, yeah. Let me pull, pull this off. Please do. Oh, it's amazing. You can, can you see or is it too shiny? It's a little, so, it's a little glary, but yeah, we yeah, can, see, you can it. see it. True blue on his hands is sick photo. Yeah. Man. Yeah. you got a Dylan. nice little office yeah, there. I really like nice. it, man. Wood panel wall. my AC going like blasting right now. It's an old building, so if I put the AC in, it just, it sounds like... Like a train. Birds coming down to bombers is what it sounds like. <laughs> I love it, man. I love everything's going well for you, dude. And you're having fun and you're trying to skate faster. I'm, and I'm, I'm thankful. I mean, so I'm like, everything. I got my worries. I got my stress. I got my everything, right? Like we all do. Of course. I'm, I'm a dad. I got two kids and a partner. And like some days life's amazing. And other days I just, you know, want to rip my legs off. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not any different than anyone else like that. Sure. No, and uh, you know, but uh, but I, I get to live the dream, right? Like I get to yeah. skate and I get to do that, um, you know, for a living. And what kind of asshole sits here and isn't stoked on that? Sure. Yeah. And plus, all the outdoor stuff that you do, it's it's incredible, man. Yeah. 
yeah, I mean, it's... Living life. I am. I am living life. I'm going full steam, but at some point it ends, right? And, like, that's been illustrated to us the last couple of years. So I just, I really just, I'm trying to be just enjoying my time here and enjoying my skateboarding and trying to be more, as, as positive, you know, as I can be. Yeah. Um, but also, hey, I'm just, let's go skate. I'm so amped. I'm so, I've been having so much fun skating that uh, I just want to keep that up. Hey, come down and skate the slappy curbs with us, man. I will. You, know, will you guys get a slappy curb show going. Oh, it is so fun, Jeff. Yeah. I do like a good curb. It has to be said. It's yeah, fun. I've been doing we get the best one. <laughs> yeah, it is. Roger does curb maintenance on it every day. Yeah. He does. What, what do you call it? I call it curb dancing when you skate curbs and you do like feebles to board slides to hurricane to feeble to board slide to hurricane. To <laughs> curb dancing. Yeah, that's Raj, curb dancing. Yeah. Sounds about right. Curb dancing, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm down for a curb dance anytime. <laughs> you know. you dancing shoes. Yeah, you got to come up here in and. Uh, location, I'll just show up in the thinnest freaking shoes and a 12 inch board. <laughs> we'll be there on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, we'll send you a pin. Yeah. <laughs> so ready. Uh, hey, Jeff, do you have any. Uh, I'll tell you what I would like to do. I would like to like uh, do some downhill racing. I'd like to go down hills. Put some gloves on? Boards. I did it many years ago with Dan Sturt one day. And I've never done that. I'd like to do that. I'd like to like bomb some hills, but with some bigger boards and some like equipment that allows you to go a little quicker. Like the proper gear, like the yeah. leather. Yeah. You want to do that, huh? Yeah. I always wanted to go faster than I've ever been able to go on street. You do want to go faster, don't you? Yeah. I always wanted to do that. Like I don't, you know, I don't know if that's a good idea now. What about slalom? Uh, no, I don't no. know. My hips don't move like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy that like jumps in the swimming pool at the, at the hotel and just sinks right to the bottom. <laughs> He's <laughs> sunk like a <laughs> sack of potatoes. The bottom all the way to the side. <laughs> I'm not the strongest swimmer. I'm not a strong swimmer. I, I dog paddle. That's what I swim. I, I do the dog paddle. <laughs> That looks about right. Yeah, it's yeah, about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Totally. You look like you have a That's good dog like paddle. Man, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeff, do you have any plans to uh, add anyone to uh, the Freedom Team? Yeah, looking at guys all the time. Do you know what I mean? But it's, I mean, that's a priority, but getting the boards done is a priority too. Yeah. Like getting mm-hmm. graphics done. I have another guest board coming out any second, like in the next couple of weeks, um, which is pretty sick. Um, but yeah. I'm leading towards that. Yeah. Just don't want to rush with any of that. And, you know, like, I mean, I've ridden for companies, you know, for like for a long time since I was a sponsored skater. And, you know, I just, I don't want to move at a pace that doesn't feel right. Sure. Yeah, I just want to go at the pace that, sh- that it should be going at, you know, and I just finished season three of graphics, right? So I'm looking at the next season of stuff, but absolutely. I mean, it's not much of a skateboard company for one person, you know, there's no, no team in I in yeah. no I and team, I should say. Have any like um, established skaters hit you up to like try and ride for you? Yeah, and, I, and I've met with a bunch of dudes too. It's just going to be the right guys. You yeah. know what I mean? And that that uh, won't be a question. Just that won't be a question mark kind yeah. of thing. I hit him up last week, Raj. <laughs> Amazing skaters, you know, hit me up, and I've met a load of dudes that it, I never ended up, you know, wanting to ride for the company or rode for the company, but. It, it, that's fine. Like I said, I'm not in like any kind of rush to build that. I, I'm confident, you know, in what we're doing mm-hmm. and what I'm building and what I want to build. And so it's just baby steps. Yeah. You know, yeah. I haven't even opened up a UK distributor yet in my home country. Oh, interesting. Happen, you know, so just looking at, you know, bit regions and as you do that, you're also looking at riders in those yeah. areas so, and that. So I'm starting to look at like what it is, what we want to build. You know, if that makes any sense. And that, and those pieces of the puzzle start to fall into place. And you have to create a brand too, right? Like when a brand first launches, you know, you have you have your negatives and your positives where people are going, the name's amazing, the name sucks, the name's great, the name sucks. What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. Right. Right? It means free blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what it means. You give life to it. It's the great escape, right? So you give life to things and that takes time. So the video stuff's important to me, like the kind of video production that we put out is going to be really good, you know, and it's going to be unique to the brand and it's going to be different and they've got to have its own thing. So I'm focused on creating a lot of that as much as I'm focused on putting riders on 
or, or doing that. Same with board shapes. It takes a long time to develop board, like your own collection of board shapes. It's true. You know? So I'm focused on building the company more than anything, everything to do with that rather than just, you know, one thing or putting the guy on right away. Um, sometimes it's good to let the brand kind of have a moment to breathe so it's not, you know, super attached to anything other than the name. The name has a chance to live on its own. Mm. Something like to do with that. You just mentioned board shapes. Like the shapes that you're doing, are you trying to like keep them like timeless and try and keep them in the line forever? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. But the skating changes, people's cool. style of skating changes, right? The kind of tricks that people do from one year to the next changes. So what people want out of the product changes all the time. And how you're not going to know what people want or what's on people's minds if you're not out there around those people. That's all right. right. So I have to be yeah, out experiment there. too. Well, I th- we use a tagline like um, um, skate more, post less, because what that means is we shouldn't be in the damn building posting this. We should be out doing it because that's the, that's what skate, the fun side of skateboarding is. True. You go out the door, you know, you can breathe, you know, and it gives you, gives you life and a lust for life. Absolutely. You know? I'm about to take my shirt off and get tribal <laughs> in here. Yeah, you are. You know, here we go. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Going full deal. I know. I yeah, like Jason that. Dill did a whole episode with his shirt off. Well, I'm not going to do that. Let's okay. put it back. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put it on my head, do-rag style. I'm getting so hot because there's no AC in here. I might have to go. But maybe I'll just do this. Is this a better? There you, no, bro. we want to see your face, bro. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> well, this is amazing, dude. I, I'm so stoked yeah, for you, bro. Man. And uh, right, we got to get some... Raj, we got to get some, some of those... Uh, uh, freedom boards, man. They were sold out on the site. Do we have oh, maybe a little discount code or something? What's that? Don't be silly, man. What the fuck? We need a little discount code, bro. The headboards are, you know, gone super fast. Yeah. I like if those. If you guys want anything, I'll send you You want to screen three of them just for us and have Ed sign them and we'll do a raffle? Wow. <laughs> That would be kind of sick, wouldn't it? That would be amazing. Raj that would keep them all. Yeah, Raj, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, make four of them. Make then. four. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I might have one that we kept for the brand, though. Maybe I'll send you that, guys, that. And you can, yes, that's what we'll do. Whatever, How's about that? Whatever you want to do, dude. I'm going to send you one when we get off today, and it's just going to show up, and it's going to be this red one right here. Okay. Right? Yeah. This one, Ed wrote some shit on this one for me, so I can't send that one, right? Okay. But, I have one more um, that we were just keeping, but I can send you guys that one. You could raffle that off. That would be pretty sick. Hey, that's amazing. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, Rogers big. I mean, we're all big Ed Templeton fans, yeah. but Rogers, you know, he's big, I huge. Love Ed. Yeah, yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. I was just thinking about it too. I think your boards that you gave us were the first ones that we ever raffled off. Like that was oh, the first raffle maybe. we ever had. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Probably. Yeah. Huh. I haven't had a beer in three months. <laughs> Why? Just keep it going. Because I got a little bit ill and I wasn't sure what it was, whether it was to do with like the, the beer, you know, or something like that. Like my stomach got funny and then I got I got sick, started vomiting and blah, 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 and started just wasn't good. What were you normally cool. drinking? I went to the hospital and I wasn't 100% sure that it, it wasn't to do with something that was going on in my stomach and the alcohol or something right. like that. But you weren't you know? a big drinker though. Were you? No, you were just I mean, a couple beers a night, maybe? Like anyone else, I'll be honest. But I haven't taken a break in a little while. Oh. So I how? Didn't... when you quit, stomach issues gone? I didn't quit. Oh. I'm not quitting. Well, no, three, <laughs> three months, though. You know, you know, when, you, when you first started your break, I should say. Yeah, you know how easy that was for me to say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going back. Yeah, it came out pretty quick. I like that, though. Uh, so stomach issues gone? Was that was that the issue, or was it? I don't know. No, like you said, still don't. Know. I was okay. drinking quite a bit that week, you know, and I, like then I got really ill, and I wasn't sure if it was related to the alcohol. So I haven't drank for a little bit to just clean the body sure. up, and that which is good. But it feels good. It feels good. Yeah. You know, but um, it definitely makes me a little bit antsy. I'm a little more agitated than I usually am when I don't drink. You know, you probably see that I keep freaking moving. I stop moving. It takes edge off. Yeah, it takes edge off. Oh, yeah. Calms me down a little bit here and there, slows me down here and there. Uh, Try gummies. Yeah, I was going to say weed, maybe. You ever do uh, Raj, big weed, no, weed, gu- weed gummy guy? I'm not afraid to say that. Like, I, I, transparent, right? Like, transparency. I smoke a little bit. Yeah. You know, I do it. But not a lot and not, not lot. all the time and not in the daytime if I can, you know, avoid it and not 
when I'm working or doing anything like sure. that. It's just that's not why I would do it. It's more for you know pain related things or uh, winding down. Winding scary, down. You know, because your body, like if you're on a tour, if you're on, or if you're on, doing demos every day, or if you're on a filming trip for a couple of weeks, it's hard every day to get 100 percent and you go out skate and you're out till midnight. Oh yeah. And then you're yeah. Again the next day and you're out till midnight. And like after a few days of that, like, you know, for me to keep doing that, you know, I don't really use anti uh, painkillers and anti inflammatories at all. No. At all. Yeah. I don't do any of that and haven't done for a very, very, very long time. That's good. Um, so I, I, you know, I use CBD oil every yep. now and again, a little bit on my legs. I've just been starting to te- try that, you know, you I've know. been doing these, uh, the, these, there's a company called Kiva and they make these ones called chill. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just like you, I'm just constantly, I just need to keep moving, you know, like, yeah. and I start taking those or whatever. And like, it's just like, Oh, I can relax. It's a gummy. It's just a gummy. Yeah. It's like a five milligram gummy. My legs get like really itchy and irritated and like uncomfortable and just feel like crawling. Yep. Like you can't sleep at night because your legs constantly want to move. Yeah. I just, I can't get like, and I can skate the next day, but it just doesn't feel good. You know, Mm -hmm. that's what starts to happen. And that's just from years and years and years of just skating and stopping and skating and stopping and skating. Mm -hmm. Maybe eat a, a, one of these gummies and do the downhill. Eat nice. one of the gummies and go straight to the freaking Staples Center. Straight to the Staples yeah. Center. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. What are they going to do with the statue that's there? Do they have any it's plans? At the, it's at the, it's at, it's at the front entrance of Vans. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, like at the right to the left of like the front door. It's the. It was only at um, Convention Center for a little bit, right? It was there for like a couple of weeks, yeah. I think. Okay. Did they get permission to put it there? Or did they just put it there? No, they got permission to yeah. put it there. Amazing. It's, I mean, it's hugely flattering. I mean, the, for anyone to build a statue of you, right? Like, I've never actually spoken about this at all. Yeah. In fact, I've never walked up to the statue at all. Did, they, did you know they were doing this? I did, yeah. But uh, later in the game, and I understood why, you know, um, like Vans and as a huge heart. Right, like it wanted really to elevate and show that skateboarding is important to it, you mm-hmm. know, and that's that was the thinking. We'll make a statue of this guy because it was a, a pivotal moment, mm-hmm. like for the brand and the time, and they wanted to make that for me as a celebration of twenty years, kind of without me knowing about it. Yeah. Oh. Right? Okay. Now I'm the kind of guy that, like, when I was younger, if I like won a contest or I did well in a contest, the first kid I saw I just gave him the trophy. Okay. <laughs> I was that guy. Yeah. I was that guy that just went, get rid of it. Yeah. Wow. Things mean nothing, right? Like the artifacts like that. Like to me, I felt like it was the experience. And then, you know, if I won a contest and like that first kid walks up and he thinks you're going to high five him and just hand him the trophy and he's stoked. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Made his life. Well, yeah. That's incredible. Before, and then that kid he's still holding on to it. Yeah. 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 So I was kind of like that guy. So when I first heard that they were going to make a statue, I was a, a little bit. Just being completely honest, this is totally transparent, sure. right? Like, at first, I looked at it and went, I don't give a shit about that. I don't want anything like that yeah. at all. And then I thought about it and I went, fuck, like, when have we ever won a battle as a skateboarder with the general public? We're always supposedly trespassing. You know, skateboarding is not a crime right. kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if you're a skateboarder, you're a downbeat, or you, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And like when I skated that like Staples Center ledge, I timed the guy, it took nine minutes security guard, he'd go around and I got the trick. I thought like if they put the statue on the ledge permanently, just a statue of a skater on the ledge, <laughs> right? And it's there permanently. You like skate you know, stop it. <laughs> we actually won a battle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like totally. with the public, they went, you can't skate here, but we put a statue on the spot. So can we? Right. But, that was, I thought that would be kind of epic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be good. On the ledge. Right, right, right. Yeah. On the ledge. Right. So I voiced that and said, put it on the ledge. It'll be sick. You know, put a plaque at the bottom that says, this is the one and only time a skateboarder ever won. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> That's you know? awesome. Yeah. I thought that. So after I rethought about it a little bit, it's hugely flattering. And, you know, and like the, the Vans family and the Van Doren family, let our hearts the size of the world. Sure. They're beautiful people. Yeah. And um, so hugely flattered by it. 
you know, hugely flattered by it. So the front entrance of vans, so that anyone who walks into the vans brand building has to think about skateboarding right when they walk in. When you That's drive out the vans, do you have your own personal parking space? No, no. I don't need that kind of treatment, man. <laughs> I don't want to be first class. You he's, know? he's got a statue in front, Raj. <laughs> yeah, right? that's, that's great. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, statue in front. That's insane. I always felt like that. I truly, I always felt like I'm a skateboarder going to sit in first class. They don't want me here. You, <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, you feel awkward like, almost, like, right? That, guy, that guy's, you know, a dirtbag and he's in first class. He must have just got a golden ticket from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That's how I was meant to feel. Yeah, bumped and, up. So I always preferred to sit in the backs of the planes and fucking talk to people and just yeah, yeah, shit. Right. You know? If I had a first class seat, you want it, take it. Oh, I would have loved to travel with you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to travel with me? Uh, yeah, I would love to. No, I, I, like punk, but I don't know. I don't know if you get what I mean. I, I no, always, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't need totally. that as a skater and as a pro skater. I don't sure. need to have the balls fluffed and I don't need to make people to make me feel special. You know. Exactly. Not because it's not why I do it, you know. And uh, no, but the statue what was, like I said, I, after it settled in, I was hugely flattered by it, and you know, and that's that. That's but I've incredible. never walked up to it. I've never touched it. I've never been closer than twenty feet to it. I've never really <laughs> checked it out. Does it make you feel weird in any way? <laughs> I said at first, yeah. Yeah, you're like, like well, how would you feel? Yeah, I, you I don't. I was right in front of you. Be pretty trippy. That would be really trippy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what that would. But but if you, but if it came from somebody that you, you know, you knew and you knew you did it for all the right reasons. Yeah. So, yeah. Totally. Right. Yeah. You'd yeah. be stoked. Totally. Hell yeah. Right? And that's how I felt, feel about it. Hey, um, you need to go to, you need to go check out the statue, man. Make sure they got everything right. You know, facial features, make sure they got well, it Well, let's all. just put it this way. What year was that? 1999? I better look good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did they take measurements of you before they made the statue? Yeah. Well, actually, after they, after they told me that they were making it, yeah. right? Um, and they showed me what they were doing. There was some slight adjustments of, I was a lot fresher looking then than I'm seeing right here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who the uh, the sculpture was like the, who sculpted it or who the I don't know was? the name of the, the people, but they're apparently they're incredibly talented, incredibly well known for it. Like I said, I'm I'm not that guy that cares about like things as much. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, I, I would I would have been just as stoked if you know if somebody had walked up to me and gave me a big hug and thanked me for you know everything we've done as skateboarders at the brand. Like, yeah, that's that in itself would have been the same value for me. You know, I'm a people person. Things don't mean shit. Um, you know, they do to a certain extent, but you know, when it comes to you know, you know, my friends and like relationships and skate or people I've skated with my whole life, um, you know, I'm just fucking thankful we're still doing it. Yeah, man. And I'm also thankful that like a, a bigger brand that's in our industry cares enough, of, even though it has a business outside of skate, right? Like it's a huge lifestyle brand. Mm -hmm. It still does things that are very focused on True to its core. people know how important skateboarding is. Hell yeah. You know, I'm thankful for that. We're all thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah. I might sleep here tonight. <laughs> oh, turn the AC on though. Do yourself a favor. Yeah. I'm going to sweat. Stay cool. I'm sitting down the lines. I've been so close to just taking my shirt. The whole show could have been me half naked, but it's unfortunate. Little yeah. did we know Jeff's in a sweat lodge right now. Oh, <laughs> Him and Arco. I promise you I have pants on below here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take your word for it. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm going to pull my zoom lens out. Hey, Jeff, when you're out there like um, in the mountains by yourself or whatever else, have you ever been, like encountered any like animals where you felt like you could get killed by it um like has there ever been like a, a sketchy situation where you need to like run and hide from a fucking bear yeah. or something like that it's, it's, yeah but every case every situation specific and every um uh, like this not this buffalo right here this mm -hmm. um another one was a little bit sketchy um and that was uh where it fell it was in an area where it was difficult to, to get to get, get to and another bull, so another buffalo, kept coming back where that buffalo was. Oh wow! Check on it. When we were in the in you know in the process of handling the animal, wow. after it went down. Um, 
like situations like that, you have to just watch and be very aware, you know, and, and we have, we have predetermined plans of how to deal with those scenarios, you know, and, and, it, and it is discussed and, uh, and on every single day that that's a, a possibility it's discussed and there's a plan roughly made. Sure. You know? Um, uh, but I did have one time, I did have one time where I was like tracking and trailing an animal. I, I, I was riding a snowmobile up this like really tight canyon. It was high elevation. It was around about, I don't know, seven to 9,000 foot elevation. And, you know, they were thousand foot above that on the tops of the peaks. But I was going up this tight, like bottom of this canyon. It was getting tighter and tighter as I went up it. And I was snowmobiling up the middle of it, the bottom. Yep. And I was trying to cut tracks, right? So basically find an area where in the snow I could see where an animal had crossed over the road and then I'd start tracking it. Mm -hmm. So I did that. We found a, I found a tra tracks of like a, you know, a, a mountain lion and uh, started to trail it up into the rocks and then, you know, took the dogs out and started to trail it with the dogs. So using the dogs as, you know, trailing capabilities to follow the animal. Sniff it out, yeah. Yeah. We got to the tops of the peaks or getting to the tops of the peaks and we split up a little bit with my friend. My friend went above where the dogs were at and I stayed low in case, you know, the animal cut down low, we could cut them off. That's how, kind of how we do it mm -hmm. sometimes. Well, anyway, what happened was I was right below the shale rock face. You know, I don't know how many a few thousand yards below. I can't remember, not that far away. And, uh, I heard all this crashing. I had the dogs all of a sudden go into like a loud, like, barking which usually means they've jumped some so some, they've either seen something with their eyes or they're they something so hot that they know something's about to happen you know hmm. yeah. wow. well i heard seconds after that i heard crash 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 in the bush above me and the first thing i think was oh i'm i'm screwed right now because uh, today i came out i didn't bring any firearms i didn't bring anything and i remember putting my hands in my pockets going I don't even have a knife. I remember thinking that. Oh, my hands, I don't even have a knife. I'm screwed. I have a little backpack and I don't know what. I, I knew what it was. I knew what animal it was. I just didn't know where it was. Mm. But it was two. It was actually two mountain lions. I, we cut a trail of uh, one one lion and there happened to be three of them. Oh, geez. And uh, one of them went sideways across the ridge line and the dogs followed that one and the other two went straight down to where I was, right here through the brush. And so I just hunkered down, kind of like braced my legs, leaned forward because I didn't know where it was going to come out of the brush. Jeez. And just heard, and like right next to me. Didn't see the animal's body, but I, I seen the crashing and the rocks and the, sorry, the uh, snow and the disturbance that it was making. And uh, it went past me below and then started to go up the other side of the mountain. That's about the only time I've had some where it was that bad, you know, but I've had, you know, I've had that kind of animal, you know, a, a yard away from my feet, a couple of yards away from my feet. Wow. Um, and uh, I don't know. You just need to be prepared for those yeah. things. You're doing you those kind of things. You shouldn't be doing, you'd be doing them without, like, safety issues or without that stuff, to, you know. And we're always prepared. But, yeah, you know, I, I don't know what to say about your answer to that question, Roger, because we have well, a lot of stuff that happens quite, quite mm -hmm quite regularly, but I wouldn't say like, it's life threatening. Yeah. I could tell you stories that would make your, you know, your, 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 you know, your hair stand on end yeah. of friends like jumping onto beds where birds were there seconds ago. And the reason why the bird wasn't there, cause it heard him as he was crashing and about to jump onto the bed that it was in Jeez. like grizzly birds, you know, with, with young, Wow. you know, that happened to a friend, uh, it was a year before last and. He's still shaken up about it. Oh, He's still, I bet. It never happens that you jump, pretty much jump on them and, and they just walk away. <laughs> so forth, you know, but I've had friends have to shoot them shoot, uh, point blank that we're going to, you know, attack them and we're on them. I've had friends get, you know, ran up trees with wow. birds and waited out. Oh you my know? gosh, dude. Um, I've had mountain lions that I'm tracking loop and start trailing me. Oh, wow. Oh, my I've gosh. had lions that I've been trailing, go up trees, jump on rock to rock to rock, jump up a tree so the dogs don't know where they are, but they know that the cat's somewhere. They wait for all the dogs to go past them, and then one by one, they start knocking off the dogs from the back. And right, kill them. really? Front. Well, I've had a lot of stuff like that happen. You know, I've seen, I've seen them hit dogs, and the dogs go, you know, 
10, 20 feet in the air. Jeez. You know? Amazing stuff. I've seen them jump 30, 40 feet over, off like uh, what? trees. What kind off. of dogs are you using to retract these? 30, animals? 40 feet. That's insane. Like, that's like, and then just run down the mountain. What kind and of so, dogs are you using to track these animals? Uh, all kinds of, all kinds of different strains of, of hounds. It depends on the area Man. and the person that you're going with, but red bones, walkers, plots, black and tans, <laughs> um, but all bred for particular trailing capabilities. So if you're in the desert, then they'd be bred for mm-hmm. trailing in the heat. If you're in the snow, they're bred for trailing in the cold. Wow. So it just depends. Hey, be careful out there. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. God damn. Bring that yeah. little knife. <laughs> yeah. Don't get I'm, caught out there again. He's a life alert. That. Yeah. It's, I, I feel safe. I feel safer out doing that every single day than I do being in the city. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and being in my car on the freeway or being in my car on the, on, on the roads or on PCH or somewhere, I feel more terrified that somebody's going to do something yeah. or a car's going to hit me or something's going to happen than I do anywhere in the mountains and deserts because, you know, that's the that's the, the truly, you know, tooth fang and claw. And mm-hmm. if you, you know, you don't get away with a lot out there. You know, you'll get your ass served if you're not prepared. Totally. Yeah. I like that life more than the, you know, the city carnage. Animals I like to get, are, they're, they're so unpredictable, know. man, but... What's that? Especially wild I was just say, they, you know, yeah. animals are so unpredictable, but at the same time, you're out there so much, you kind of, you get to know them. You get to know what they're kind of all about and how they move. Yeah. A little bit, right? I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we, it depends on the species, depends sure. on the location and, and everything. But yeah, we do, we cover all over. We do a lot of, we work with uh, the Hearst Corporation. You guys heard of the Hearst Corporation? Yeah. You've heard of the Hearst Ranch in the central coast of California? The Hearst. It's uh, Hearst the Castle. Hearst Castle and stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the outfit that, uh, that I guide for, um, we lease 77,000 acres of the oh. Hearst Corporation land. It's called the Jack's Ranch. Oh. Um, it's where they, they all of the beef for Whole Foods. Oh, oh what? In the U.S., all of the, be- the beef, they have the contract for Whole Foods for cattle. Oh, Wow. wow. Damn. We run pig hunts on the, on that Jack's Ranch. Uh, we just started doing that uh, horseback as well. I just had some. I own a mule. <laughs> Since I saw you guys, I bought a mule. You really? bought a mule. I bought a mule. What'd you name it? Lil Nas. All you need is forty <laughs> acres now. <laughs> I don't have forty acres. Forty acres and a mule. No, but I do own a mule. Where do you, is he there at the office? No, he <laughs> has a guy that uh, works for a hunting outfit. That's our wrangler that kind of handles all of our animals. Mm. And, uh, he he kind of keeps them there and keeps them moving and keeps them going. Okay, you know? good. I don't get to ride as much as I'd like to, but but he's my animal and I bought him because he's the right size for me, which means he's a short ass. He's a short <laughs> ass. Yeah, he's yeah. a short <laughs> ass. <isn't laughs> nice. But he's epic. He's got tiger stripes on the backs of his legs. And oh, wow. He's actually a, a little bit of a rescue from an old uh, Navajo res. Uh, we're not sure whether on the Arizona or the New Mexico side. Okay. Uh, but he's a very unique looking beast. Amazing. I'm going to send right now. I'm going to text Kelly a picture of a little nose. Yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not every day that we have a, a guest on the show say that they just bought a mule. Yeah. yeah. Jeff Rowley is going to text me a photo of his mule. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is the coolest thing. I have a folder. I have a folder with him. There you go. There you go, man. Oh, yeah. that's a good looking mule. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you me riding him so you can see that's how it. little he is. Oh, yeah. Huh? Right here. A little Nas. Little he's Nas. cool, isn't he? Little he's Nas. So cool. Look at that. Little Nas rips. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You need a freaking kickflip him or like do a roof gap, land on his back. Or you something. need a ramp, like, yeah, like a ramp over him or something. Front side. Listen, yeah. if, if Louis Tolentino can ollie over a cow, you got this. Remember that picture of Nats ollieing over a cow? I always wanted to ollie over a cow after I saw that <laughs> picture of Nats ollieing like fiberglass cow. Or oh, like, yeah. out. Dude, Louis Tolentino ollieed over a real cow. Who did? Louis Tolentino. From the flat? No, he had, he had a kicker. He had a kicker. He had pop. Oh, dude. yeah. Yeah, dude. Still does. Yeah. He all eat a cow? He all eat a cow. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm actually just trying to find that picture. But you forget how many pictures you're doing while shooting these phones, right? Oh, trust oh, me. Yeah. 4,000 pictures later. Man. Okay, there he is. There he is. All right. There we go, Kelly. 
Never thought we'd be sitting around with Jeff Rowley talking about mules. Whoa, dude, look at your fit, too. Oh, he's got a good, let's see. <laughs> that is sick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put that in my wallpaper on my phone now. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that'd be it's great. ridiculous. Right? <laughs> Leslie is not a very big animal, but look at his markings. He's absolutely beautiful. Kelly yeah. opens up his phone like, oh, who's that? Who's Jeff Rowley? <laughs> <laughs> on a mule. What you on a mule. <laughs> what do you think I have yeah. on my wallpaper? <laughs> Next picture I'm gonna send you is me from boarding him. Oh, Perfect. there you go. You gotta wear that same outfit. That's good. That's camoed out. That's awesome. Yeah. I is that what it, you man. wear normally? Do you wear camo outfits when you go out? Yeah, I prefer solids personally. Oh, okay. Like I, I like to use like earth colors and then break my body up all over with like give like a darker brown hat and like a greener body and then lighter pants and then dark pant shoes. I like to break the parts of my body up as much as I like to use camouflage. Mm, interesting. It just depends on on the animal. It depends on the location and where we're at too. Sure. And you know, that particular is very green. Like all of the coastal hills in California are beautiful. Do you see that property that somebody? Put online recently. Uh, I don't know if it's a pro skater owns like five acres and built a lot of stuff to skate out in the central coast. Did you see that one? It was going around the internet. No, I didn't see that. I don't know whose it is. I saw you know a skater that's a real estate guy skating it. Really pretty funny. A guy goes to list the house and does a quick pivot fakey. <laughs> that's tight. Did not see yeah, that. You remember Ben Fisher? Yeah. Ben yeah. Fisher? yeah. 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 Right. Ben's a real estate agent yep. in Long Beach. Yep. But he was a really good skater. He posted something on his Instagram this last week or something. That's what I'll I have mean. to look into that. Yeah. Never, never heard of it. Yeah. Huh. Man, yeah. Jeff Rowley and his mule Nas. Little Nas. Yes. Little Nas. I'm full of random facts and stupid shit. You got to come up here. Skate the curbs with us. Bring your mule if you want. <laughs> Maybe, dude, bring a mule to the beach would be funny as Yeah. Fun. Well, dude, there's the cops are on the horses out here. There so. you go. He, the only thing with Lil Nas, though, is uh, he was handled not that well when he, you know. Oh, okay. So I don't know you what. be careful. We don't, yeah. yeah. He, more of, uh, he, he, he doesn't want to be friendly with anyone, but he's very good at what he does. Sure. He, yeah. Very smart. Yeah. Yeah. He care. goes where he needs to go and he leads super well and he packs really well, but. So if maybe you yeah. accidentally smack him on his butt at the wrong time, he might just go a wall. Right, uh, right, right, right. You got to treat him with respect, you know. He's been beaten up a little bit. He doesn't like you to look him in the eyes and stuff like oh. that. Oh, whoa. Well, neither he's does Raj, so. Yeah, he's been <laughs> mishandled, right? Like mistreated. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, that would... But he rips, yeah. yeah. Definitely going to have to front board him, though. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I'm sure he'll love that. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Watch out for his little ass. <laughs> You won't like that. Yeah. <laughs> Spill a ledge, put it on top of them. Man, this is incredible, yeah. bro. So who's is it... next on the show? Who you guys have, do you guys do you have next week? Nobody. We don't know. Who do you want to see? This is the last show? Yeah. It's the last, we're ending. Like the movie theater? <laughs> yeah. No, we're just okay. taking it week, little week by week, you know? But we appreciate you uh, coming on and Fuck sharing yeah. Yeah, skate stories you, with us and just wrapping out. It's amazing. Yeah, it's fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it last time. I enjoyed it this time. So come back anytime you please. Let me know when you hit those curbs. We'll be there Wednesday. What day is it today? I don't even know. It's what Monday. Day. Monday. Yeah, it's Monday. I'm not going. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, you know what? We'll keep sending you out texts and emails yeah. and DMs yeah. and whenever you get a chance. Well, We'd love to have I you out here, man. You guys rule, though. Thank you for having me and stuff. And of course, glad you guys are healthy and safe in this mangled world that we live in. And you as you well. Know. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, free dome. Thank we'll you. be looking for that board in the mail. You know, if you guys want anything, let me know. I'll send you guys a load of stuff. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you just said you came out with season three, or you're coming out with season, season three. three. I'm just kind of putting the graphics to bed. Putting it to bed. Yeah, and then we have a guest board coming out, which will come out right before season three kind of drops. Okay. A little bit. Um, but yeah, psyched. Graphics of this season is sick. How many graphics do you, re- do you do per season? Like pro board? Sure. It kind of de- it depends. We've got a couple. Yeah, okay. You know, it kind of depends. Mm. You know, like there's no full-time riders, right? Like pro guys on the team right now. So the only pro board the first season was mine well mm-hmm. technically this is kind of the first season so it's mine and ed and there was a reason for that yeah right like the first pro on the board is ed templeton first guy to get a pro board is ed templeton out of respect and love for ed straight up 
like that was intentional. Right. You know? So now the season after I have one more guest board that's been planned for a little while, you know, and then, and then, and then stuff coming after that. But every season we're going to add things, you know, yep. add kind of like new board shapes, add riders, add different things each season, add distributors. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. So just going to keep enjoying it, man. Love it. Yeah, yeah, man, I love it. it. Awesome. You know what I love that? I can really just hammer it out and try to film a video part. Yes. Try to film a video that I'm proud of and that, you know, is uh, it's really motivated to do that right now. Extremely motivated. Amazing. You know, that Vans video was fucking fun, you know, but I, I really want to see that positivity all the way through the end on this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff, one thing you did that was super sick was – um. You mailed out um, kind of like catalogs. Like I, I got a physical piece of paper with like all your boards. And oh yeah. And everything. Like, I'm like with stickers. I'm like this is cool as shit. It's like it reminded me of, like being in the early '90s. Yeah, we did. We made the actual like printed paper catalogs and yeah. mailed it to skate shops and stuff. Because when we asked them like how do you want us to interact with them, quite a lot of them just freaking. You know, said that. Just we never got any mail. It was kind of like the joke. Mm, yeah. Don't get any mail. No yeah. one cares about us. Yeah. So we just sent them freaking mail. It's amazing. <laughs> that was. Did, know, it came to my house. Those like, kinds of things early on when the company's small or when you know you can do those more of that kind of thing and you know I choose to do that but you can't do that the whole way through necessarily right like you can't do all of those things that you can pull off you know early off in a brand or like sure. when. When the skew count's smaller, like if you mail somebody 30 pages of separate sheets, they don't want that. Yeah. Right? They want to throw that away. But if you mail them six, eight, they they can you can get their attention. And yeah. so and it was that really, like, you know, the focus is definitely to just be completely inspired by mm. the act of skateboarding, you know? Yeah. And man. the graphic and the graphic and the feeling and the ideas for the graphics and the boards are all related to skateboarding in my twisted brain, yeah. you know. It just gave yeah. it like a homemade vibe to it too. Mm. We did. We did. Pretty much was that, you know, yeah. like the catalogs, we just printed everything out on the floor, cut it all up, pasted it all over the pages and sent it out, you know, like a ransom note. Some more graphics, a little yeah. bit more like that. Like I've always enjoyed kind of doing all that kind of a we pasted kind of DIY, like yeah. you know, collage kind of stuff doing a little bit more of that kind of graphic and a little bit more graphic expansion on the next kind of batch of gear, mm -hmm. which I'm excited for. Pretty, like a couple of the graphics. You know, you, have you ever had graphics, like pro board graphics that you've had that just you just know you're just, like you're, you, you know it'll hit the mark. Like for me, this graphic right here, as far as like an Ed Templeton graphic, like if I wanted to buy an Ed Templeton board, that's the graphic I want. Yeah. I want yeah. An early Ed Templeton painting yeah. on a board. Right, right. Right, like that's it. And I want it simple and bold because no one draws like it. Was that from an early TV uh, board? Like, was, did they have like stomachs it, on it? Was. Like four stomachs? Here's what it was. I'll show you. Like, Ed had a had a painting, a big yellow white painting of like a cow with its two stomachs. It's yeah. Top yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the light's terrible in here, but this top right. graphic's the cow's head right Ooh. here. And then there's its, uh, its stomachs, its two stomachs. And that was for TV, right? It was a sticker for TV, but yeah. the board graphic was like a slick graphic with a cow on it and then a bunch of like photos and weird shit on yeah. there. Mm. Um, but, but Ed had the painting, right, like in his house. And I remember there was a period of time in the 90s where Ed was giving away paintings and stuff like that because he just didn't have room in his house, mm -hmm. right? So like I think I went into one of the rooms and he's like, pick any painting that you want. And there was probably, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 paintings in there. So I started to look through the paintings, you know, and go through and I went through one and recognized it from the board graphic, the television board graphic and went, I always loved that, like slick graphic, always loved that graphic. And, uh, and this is that drawing in the painting. So I asked Ed if I could have that one. And he said, yeah. In fact, he was like, dude, that was like a mistake. Like, was all <laughs> kinds of, like he'd rubbed out a load of the first sketches for it and everything and signed it on the back side as well as the front side of the painting. Yeah. But it reminded me of like early television graphics. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I had that painting on the wall of my house forever. It's on the wall of my house right now. And uh, like I said, when he asked me to do a toy machine board, that was the first thing I thought of. I just thought, the cow, the damn freaking well cow. Put that on. <laughs> and then, because I'd never even thought about it before, you know, Ed just called me, hey, like, would you um, do it, uh, be stoked on doing a guest board, a toy machine, right? Yeah. 
And I don't think they've ever done any. I don't know if they I don't know if that's the only one they ever did or they've done other guest boards. Um, but, uh, but I said, yeah. And like, that was a graphic that I wanted. I said, and I'm actually uh, surprised you didn't go right for toy machine after you had left flipped. Yeah, I could. I love the brand. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love Ed and I love everything he stands for, you know, but I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> this is an opportunity for me to, you know, create something that's just about skateboarding that, um, I don't know that we can create from the ground zero all the way through, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and riding for somebody else after like being with the company most of my life, um, felt like, a, I'm just going to felt like a cop out to me. Hmm. It felt like, yeah, just go and ride for somebody else and take the check. Yeah. That's what it felt like. And I just felt like that's not why I do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's not why I do it. You know, I'm just going to skate and I'm going to see how this progresses, you know, see if I want to start a skateboard company, you know, and, uh, and I couldn't help myself, you know, like I'm just juiced. I'm still like, I love the skate culture. I love skateboarding. I love skateboard graphics. I love all of that visual side of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I want to add to that, you know, like, I don't know if that makes any any sense. Like I'm 43 fucking years old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to die at some point. Right. Right. Hopefully not by a lot my online. Hey, if I die fighting for my life, I'm a happy man. That's better than, you know, being kicked to the curb kind of thing. I would like to, I'd rather be somewhere where the air smells good. Cause those last few breaths actually matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um, no, 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 no. I felt, you know, like it's an opportunity to create, yeah. you know, and the frustrations that you have with companies or, you know, brands that you ride for creatively. Um, the skateboard company is a chance to just take down those reins, mm -hmm. you know, and, and kind of have a little bit more of an open kind of book to it. Yeah. And I like that. I like the idea of creating a lot of graphics or a lot of ideas for skateboards forever. Sure. Like I can do that creatively forever as long as I'm into it, yeah. you know, and I'm relevant. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I felt like I had something that I would like to um, do with that. So I would like to spend a lot of time, you know, creating a brand in skateboarding. So I don't know, maybe one day I can look back and, you know, even my kid might look and go, okay, that's like what my, why my daddy liked it. You know, that's what he got stoked on, you know, and uh, I want, I, I want kids to see that and just get hyped. You know, I want them to see the stuff that we do and know that like, we're just want an open creative platform. Yeah. You know, I want to just exude that and just live that because that's the life that I live, you know, like as a pro skater, I've always been able to, you know, kind of create and work on a lot of my own product my whole life. Um, so to be able to take like a skateboard company and create a skateboard company from ground zero um, is something that is, I just feel thankful for the opportunity. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, you know I don't have to do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to. It's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Skateboard companies, they say it's a labor of love, but it's also a frigging business too. <laughs> it still true. has to yep. function. Doors have to open up. Yeah. You know, it gets stagnant and gets boring and... That's not good enough neither. We've got to keep pushing and creating. Right. And, and uh, I realized something about me is I always enjoy that like challenge to keep creating. And that's why I started this cable company because it gives me an outlet, mm -hmm. that, you know? And, and uh, I don't know, like the old kind of, you know, skateboard artist that spends his life drawing skateboard graphics and barely makes a penny and, you know, some people appreciate it and some people don't appreciate it. I appreciated it. I appreciated all of the, uh, you know, graphic art that came out like Santa Cruz and Powell and World Industries and, you know, yeah. all of that. You know, I, I, I loved watching it as a kid going all the way through that and then, you know, being a pro skater. And I just like to pass that on a little bit, some of that, you know. And I, f I felt like, you know, we lost Jake and... You know, we lost uh, Jeff like recently, yeah. Grosso, and like we with that we lose culture. We we lose we lose packages of these experiences that need to be passed and shown and things. And 
you know, and, uh, you know, I, I take, I don't take that kind of like lightly. I, I really do feel that it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing to do that and to like show people that they can start companies from nothing and they can create from nothing and do whatever the fuck they want and it can work, Yeah. you know? And like, I've been fortunate enough that like, I've had a rad time skating and life's been good to me. And, you know, I've, I've always stayed like focused on like learning skate tricks and being stoked on my skating. I've never, you know, really been through those periods where I was just super burnt out and not skating. Mm -hmm. right? And I want to create that through a board company, yeah. you know, that extra energy that I can't get rid of that like makes me freaking want to skate and just freaking rip it and go at it. Yeah. You know, I put that energy into this company. Love that. You're doing it. Like every Most of the graphics we're doing now are like hand sketched and the ideas like come from somewhere and, you know, in that process. And I wish I could show people more of that process. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do it, but I think kids would be psyched to see like the simplicity of, you know, of that creation, totally. you know, from an idea all the way through to a finished product. Totally. Yeah, incredible. You know? Yeah. It's just good storytelling. Yeah, you can document it. Yeah, so I don't know. So it's that. Like with video, video is a huge element, you know, like you have your audio and your visual, right? Mm -hmm. And like, um, you know, the video element to me is a side that like that's got to – remember Blind Video Days when it came out? Man, like, yes. How much of a complete diversion from other skateboard videos that was, right? Yeah, was some insane. people didn't like it when it came out. Yeah. You know, some people watched it and went, ah, that's a little too kind of – avant-garde or something like that uh, you know i remember it came out the same time as the life video came out soldier story yeah um with sean sheffy in it which just indicated like an absolute fuck i got a, i've got an artifact for you this is a okay. good one Check this out. let's go like, man i love this this is trippy you want to see okay. sean sheffy came to england in 1992 wow right to a skate park and skated in there, did a demo for H Street right before the live video came out. So none of us even knew who he was, right? And he okay. looked exactly the same as in the live video. I think he had the same shorts on. <laughs> in the live video, these like limpies or skate rags or something. Anyway, I was at the demo and I was like this big, little, little kid. Don't think I was, before I was sponsored. Anyway, he gave me a t-shirt at the demo and I have it right here. He gave right. you that shirt? What? He gave me this t-shirt in 1992. Right, a, a demo. Sean Sheffy did. Sean, you're, you're so no sick. No way, wow, dude. Sean Sheffy, life through my eyes. That's incredible. Right? And this was like, I don't know if this came out or whether this was like a promo shirt for life. Anyway, Sheffy gave that to me a demo, right? And that night I did acid for the first time. <laughs> okay, wow. In, and I stayed in the law courts building and slept in a sleeping bag. My friend spent the night in a tree. <laughs> and I slept in the law. Think of it now. Like then, like law courts or like city buildings were completely dead. You could sleep out the front entrance and there was no security, no cameras, nothing like sure. that. Sure. So we would just sleep in the city when we missed buses or missed trains and things like that and sk or skate all night. Anyway, Sean gave this to me at a dang well demo like so many years ago. And it's a large, right? And I was so little that I never wore it. I just kept it brand new until I moved to the U S in the early nineties. And then years later, I found it in my cupboard brand new, never even been like unfolded. It was beautiful. Perfect. I brought it out about when we were filming, I think propeller or someone filmed the trick wearing mm -hmm. it. What? Right in this, but that's one of the only artifacts I have in the building. Pretty sick. That's that's a, you filmed a trick in that shirt. Yeah. I filmed a trick in Mount Baldy. I did like a backside kickflip in Mount Baldy. So sick. In the propeller video and then sent the still of it to Sheffy and said, Hey, there's no way you remember like ever even meeting me or even being there. Right. But look at this photo. It's in Thrasher Mag. And you, you gave me that shirt when I, in 1992. And this was then 2000 and whatever, four years ago, probably. <laughs> was he tripping? I, I don't know. I can't remember. It was a few years, quite a few years ago now. <coughs> Excuse me. He did respond though. He did. That's awesome. Yeah, Sean's sick. Sean's a man. Yeah, he's really Yeah, and like I was so motivated by like all that filming in that, in that oh, video. Like, it was mostly stir footage. And, uh, but that's an example. Like the way that that was filmed stood out. Right. Like right. in itself, that filming style was a 
like a video style of film and skating. Like people haven't filmed skating from those angles before, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, like with video creation and video content creation, it takes a minute because you have to build, you know, these kind of templates of what you want it to look like. Absolutely. And, and then again, you have to smash that next time and redo it, but it has to still be kind of consistent kind of thing. So, you know, I don't know. Man. I'm tired. I've been skating all freaking. I know. Look at you. I went. Now. I left. The, no, I wasn't super early. I went really far. I went right to the because I just came back to Long Beach, so I went all the way out and skated in Redlands today. Oh, oh wow. you were way out there. Yeah, way out, way oh, out there. God. You know, in the blazing sun out oh, there. Oh, it was all probably hot as hell. Out I know. Yeah. yeah. And now you're sitting here sweating with us too again. Yeah, it's nighttime. Oh, wow. <laughs> you got another clip. But Listen, I almost pull an old duels. You got the. Oh <laughs> yeah, I thought I'm I'm, I'm going to buy no duels. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to make a statement. <laughs> <laughs> you can't handle your drink. Oh man. Well, listen. I'll dude. tell you one thing. I did read, read right, like, and this isn't like set up. I have my bag right here, and I read a lot. I'm not even going to show you it. Like, um, Steve Van Doren, uh, Paul Van Doren, who founded Vans, just wrote a book. If you ever want to be fucking inspired, read that book. What's it oh, called? It's not out yet. It's his like autobiography. Oh, I've okay. Been reading it like day before yesterday. Yeah. And uh, fucking gnarly, man. I imagine People. it's called something like Off the Wall or something like that. Off yeah. the Wall. No, I don't know what <laughs> it's name. This is like a whatever advanced copy, so I don't know if the cover's going to be, probably won't be the same. Oh, okay. Paul Van Doren, a memoir wow. by the founding of Vans, which is nuts. Looks like a thick book, man. He's almost 90 years old in June. It's incredible. Damn. Wow. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty gnarly, like three dudes basically built the footwear factory by themselves. With Crazy. No That's impressive, dude. It's like, you know, in California. You could like try and do that now. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. it's, it's no different than you know, a few people coming together and starting a company and just going for it, yeah. it, it now, but just the ingenuity and the balls to, you know, not mm-hmm. let anything stop you and just go ahead and do it. It's hugely motivating. Totally. totally. Well, listen, bro, turn that air conditioning on. Get yeah. some, get some air, you know. And jump on little Nas and ride all the way back to Long Beach. <laughs> yeah, Nas. Get, get ride it all the way to Staples Center from here. There's no Just, traffic. Yeah, you need, little, you need <laughs> a little, you need a days, you need a little don- donkey light or like a little headlamp or something. Hey, I tell you what, though, that spot. Imagine it doubles at the same time on both sides, both Ooh. sides, front and back lip. You and you oh. and Clive. Hey. I'm not down. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that like seeing that kind of shit, if we want to end it on like a positive note, yeah. seeing that kind of stuff truly, honestly, stokes me out. I love seeing people just destroying spots and if it's spots that I've gone and skated yeah. and they want to come and like smash it to pieces and just shut that thing down forever. Go for like it. It's I love That's it. That's awesome, yeah. man. I love it. I'm the opposite, Jeff. I don't want <laughs> people touching anything that I skated. Where's your spots? You won't even tell me where your spots no, are. No, I won't tell you. You know what? In the 90s, there was, there was those dudes like, I'm not telling you. Oh, where dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, was, it. Mm. I was always the guy that, like, don't even try to not help have me find that spot. I'll find that spot before you've even gone there. Right? <laughs> He's getting his Thomas guide out. Good and that, and I'm that guy too. Like you call me, hey, where's that spot you skated? It was just in the mag. It's just right there. Go skate it. Who gives a fuck? It's skateboarding. Have at it. Yep. Jeff Rowley. Thank you for having me. Dude, thank, thank you so you. much for taking the time, man. And uh, dude, we really enjoy hanging out with you. Yeah. Always. Thank you, guys. We'll talk soon, eh? Yep. Yep. Meet you at the curb. Send me the coordinates. I'll be there 30 minutes before you get there.